See, I love the big, you know, swinging potential we have here. It looks like we won't be starting on it as we do see the traffic whizzing by. Yeah, it's gonna be city center and I gotta say, one of my favorite plays, or I wouldn't even say it's a play, it's more as a mistake. I love when fights happen out here by this health pack because almost every time someone runs the traffic, <laughs> gets hit by a car, whether it's on purpose, just to reset yourself, or maybe you just lose the track of where you are because those cars are instant hits. Don't play on the street, don't play in traffic ever. It's, it's a bad idea, whether you're in game or in real life. But as we see these comps coming out, very interesting from Wichita State, they're gonna be going with a brawl, but it's gonna be a Diva and a Moira instead of a Zarya and a Baptiste. On the other side, they're gonna be running a, um, a double bubble comp here for Cincinnati. And I actually like that a lot because there's so much high ground here. They can just try to play up there, but it looks like it's gonna be the other team that's gonna get there first with their Lucio speed. Yeah, both these teams have the capability to get their tanks up into the high ground, or at least one of them. Handog initially going to be trying to contest that higher ground, has to back out as the deflect doesn't allow them to mitigate all the damage they start taking, and immediately focusing onto that D.Va, able to build up quite a bit of ult charge off of the Genji. Of course, those changes did go through very recently, slightly buffing their attack speed, but already it's a one-for-one -one trade, although losing the Lucio for Wichita State might make it a little bit difficult to get in a favorable position. Dynamite taking a little bit of a wailing, but has to back up, and now Wichita State starting to fumble a little bit here as their diva gets Demek and taken down. Yeah, they need to take down Silver Town. They do get the point capture. They take down the Coalescence there. The Moira gets melted, and this might be turnable now. Certainly looks to seem to be the case. Wichita State now trying to slowly back up that Lucio and the Torbjorn, both trying to keep presence on point, looking to swap in and out. One going in for the other. Maybe building up a small amount of charge, but an incredible amount. Only about 17, 20%. And as this Bravo Rage goes on, I'm sure right now Flex Q's missing and guys, please let me play the Genji. I know it's their favorite character. They even have a tattoo dedicated to that. But what's not going to be dedicated to anyone at the tank line right now is Wichita State. They fall in different ways, but they both fall nonetheless. That's going to be a reset. Now Cincinnati is going to pass over with point percentage as well as all charging. I mean, these ultimates, they have built up almost all of them except for the rally. They just used the Primal Rage, so that's going to be five ultimates in about 40 seconds here on this map. Very good focus fire so far. And Cincinnati has a great opportunity to put a lot of damage on a nice anti-nade coming in as well from Chu. Allows the cleanup to come up with no healing can be done. Turret taken down as well as the Torbjorn. That's going to be the fight. It's a very quick and efficient fight. They use the high noon, which maybe wasn't needed there for most speedy, but they do use the grab. That was the big fight when they're a very nice anti-nade coming in from Chu. They're gonna have the nano, they're gonna have the blade, and Foxconn is not gonna have that sound barrier. No sound barrier to cope with this nano blade. It's gonna be initiated and dog is diving immediately onto the Lucio. Didn't decide to or didn't realize that perhaps that the sound barrier wasn't in effect, but Lucio able to get far enough from their team that only Dynamite fell out for this University of Cincinnati to keep pushing. Yep, they're still gonna have Rally. It's the only ultimate they haven't popped just yet. This should actually be pretty good for Wichita State University, as long as the execution doesn't fall after taking that nap. They need to get a good shatter. That has to be their initiator. There is no main shot. Like, you do have Winston bubble, but once you break that, there's nothing. You gotta force them to come to the point. Um, and the rally's gonna come out early, so you can just try to cancel it out now. Oh. The shatter, though, it no. misses! And the shatter runs right into the Winston bubble as it's getting dropped. Wet Flapjack's getting stunned out and burned by the Molten Core. As Dynamite now trying to find anything with that high noon, does find a one. This is a good opening for Wichita State. They need to start getting some more progress, though. It's gonna be the Genshin getting stunned out for a moment. Has to deflect, buying themselves a little bit more time, letting that point get to that full 99. What's crazy is that, which is I'll say was the team that first capped this, you gotta remember that, they started at about 17%, now they gotta bring it back from 99 to, from 17. Not 99, 0, but still, like, that first mm -hmm. fight did not go in their favor, not much has, but that did. The Shatter doesn't connect, but that Molten Core, it does, it creates space. Now there's still ultimates on life, which I'll say, just go for the Ant Matrix. You've got the perfect alleyway, the perfect sightline for it right here, right now, but it looks like they're gonna be holding it for a little bit longer. See if they opt into it a little bit later as Cincinnati reveals themselves an aggressive Winston go in. As everybody turns their attention, this grab goes out, sound barrier responds, and with that, it looks like the Zarya's gonna drop Silver Talon, not able to find anything. As well, neither is Speedy, who gets caught out by the Diva Matrix, but Flapjack as well throws in the Primal Rage, doesn't find anything for it. A lot of opportunity here from Cincinnati, doesn't find a lot. That was a huge misplay. It wasn't just the Prime Rage, it was also the Nano that was committed there from Shu. They had the Blade online. They had a great winning combination. They know the Sound Barrier was just used that well. Now they're going to have to go 
or just a normal dragon blade. Oh no, right? <laughs> still can get a lot of value, but Gen Genji can get melted uh, pretty quickly. And Fluffy but Deadly still has the Shatter. They almost have the High Noon. They have the Flash Bang. So And Dog going to have a lot less protection here if they try to go for this blade now. Yeah, Flex Execution building up that Molten Core might be a valuable asset in mitigating a lot of the damage from the Dragon Blade. And Dog immediately diving towards that McCree. Diva trying to keep them protected and can do only so much. However, it's Andog who has to take a lot of time deflecting, and because of that, they're not able to find anything. In fact, they will be brought to the ground with Molten Core brought out from Flex Execution, making this point a little bit more dangerous, as does the turret taking down Silver Talent. With this, Witch Toss State, it looks like they're looking to lock down this point just a little bit more. The McCree to zone everything out, and with that, Witch Toss State do manage the return flip. There were still three players alive there for Cincinnati. None of them were able to touch the point. I think they were all scared about the High Noon that just came out. They wanted to avoid it, even though none of them are actually in Dynamite Sightline. But regardless, a good zoning alt that helps them win the point. And man, that was so back and forth, Sir Waltham. I thought yeah. for sure Cincinnati had it in the back, but they used too many ultimates in a lost fight. And that Nano Blade, they needed it to be their bread and butter. She there just tried to save the fight when they didn't need to. Same thing with Wet Flap Checks. They got to hold on to that Primal Rage for a last fight situation because if they had both of those things, I think Wichita State would have lost that fight and the point would have been going the other way. But you can't think about the what ifs. You can only think about the now. And as we go to university, is going to be Brawl v. Brawl. And oh, Speedy going to be on that Reaper. So we do know there were some changes to Reaper to make him a bit stronger now. We'll see how that works out for them. Certainly it will. Both teams opting into that D.Va. Going to be able to mitigate a lot of those ultimates. The Blizzard perhaps most crucially if they're able to catch out those maze. Wichita State immediately going to be taking presence onto the point. Giving them a little bit more initial advantage over the University of Cincinnati. Now has to try to mitigate their way onto point unless they want to capture to go out of their favor. Cincinnati so far not able to find too many kills. Wet Flapjacks. A little bit of a wailing that Reinhardt has to be very careful. He doesn't take too much aggression. Otherwise, he falls and the rest of his team soon to follow. As now, the main wall going to be coming up. The night. McCree can't be saved. Andog able to land these shots. And this Natty was looking like they were in a pretty rough spot. But already coming up with some advantageous kills. Oh, Speedy managing to survive for the time being. And it looks like these projectiles being increased for Reaper are doing dividends. Went up from 5.5 per shot to 6. So that damage has been ramped up just a little bit, but it's all you can need when you are a tank buster. One thing to note that I'm a bit surprised about was Silver Talon being on the D.Va, considering that I thought their Zarya was really, really good. Get their mech back. They don't have that D.Va bomb online. They don't have the self effect. That was just getting the mech back itself. They do have the Shatter, though. So they do have an ultimate to try to win out this fight if things go wrong. Deep eyes out for Wet Flapjack to go for it. Does get the two with it. However, doesn't go for the charge. The Immortality Field is prompted out. And now it's going to be the May Blizzard coming on a lot. The Flex Execution looking to really lock things down for Wichita State. Now they get the first shatters on the line on their end of the things. Fluffy but Deadly going to be dropping it. Knocks it down the D.Va. Not quite able to get the D.Va, but the Flashbang going to hit her mid-flight. And with that, it looks like Wichita State going to be getting another reclaim. This time around the 40% mark on their opponent. And if you're Cincinnati, you, you're probably actually pretty happy with that, even though, you know, it didn't go exactly your way. Um, but you get out the sound barrier from Foxicon after using your own. Um, and Dog is about to have that Blizzard now, it's online. They also have the Death Blossom, which might be less effective, especially if the D.Va Hill Gill is still in mech. You get that D-Mech though, then you go for it. You make sure they don't have DM, you throw in the Blizzard Cincinnati. There's a lot of ways they can win this one. Certainly have to agree here. The question is, what route do they take? It looks like they're favoring that small room once again. No surprise, they won it this first time with the fight. It's going to be the amplification matrix coming out from Chu, looking to really increase the damage that Cincinnati's capable of. But then a quick swap, a little bit of a shuffle there coming in from Wichita State, trying to reposition themselves behind their opponents, but it doesn't quite work for them as much. Flapjack gets a big fire strike. And this is best case scenario now for Cincinnati. Uh, the the rotation, I like the idea of it. Wichita State, you got to remember where. The amplification matrix is in place there. They just ran right into a big fire strike. That's going to be just doing so much extra damage through the uh, garage doors, I like to call it, through the IMAX, whatever you want to reference it as. And they have four ultimates still. The only thing they used there was that amp matrix. They have so much online. Shall say, they're getting close to some stuff, but they're not going to have a nearly as nice of an alt bank. And we're, this isn't last fight territory by any means, but every fight is going to be going the other way, it looks like, at least for a little bit. We're going to be seeing the amplification matrix come out. The Reinhardt immediately getting sectioned off, but not taking that down because of it. Wet Flapjack throws out the Earth Shatter, only takes down the Baptiste, and the OC going in with the Death Blossom gets caught out by the Diva Matrix, not able to find too much. Only the Deadly going in for an aggressive charge, but it's blocked off by Andog's May Wall. And with this, it looks like Cincinnati have to get the point over. 
Yeah, it's it's like the exact same play that just happened. The animatrix creates enough space, then they try to rotate, but Cincinnati are caught out by it. Someone falls because they're being shot through it. And uh, the ultimates just don't like oh speed. You gotta remember that if there's a diva online, your death blossom it's just gonna get completely eaten up. It's a hungry, hungry diva. She's gonna absorb all of it. Silver Talent does have a self-destruct, might be trying to look for the throw in, and there it is. Certainly is. Optimistic doesn't find too much, only the Immortality Field, but it sends everybody into this small room, and because of that, and Dog able to drop a big blizzard, locking down the tanks. Reinhardt, the Diva, not left for this world. The Soundbanger does come into Wichita to try to lock, to try to keep alive whoever they can, but it looks like the damage is already been done by the University of Cincinnati, who are just piling ahead. Yeah, they flip the point in the middle of all this chaos, and now they're only 4% away from winning. The Ant Major's cut off by the wall. Can anyone touch? No, they can't even trigger overtime. Wow, what a play by Andog. Their Blizzard being thrown in there, it was purposely timed. Foxicon had the sound barrier, but it was it's, it's line of sight. You have to be in Lucio's uh, range to actually have it hit you, and objects in walls, and any kind of wall. There was the ice wall. We'll cut that off there. And dog completely siphoning off Luffy, but deadly. They didn't get that extra shield. They didn't get to survive. And because of that, Cincinnati is going to even things up here as we go into our last point of Oasis here on Gardens. Interestingly enough, it looks like Fluffy but Deadly might be leaning towards that Wrecking Ball. Gotta love to see it, at least if you're a fan of the faster characters. Yeah, it, it's interesting with the... Yeah, I was going to say, like... I don't know. I, I don't know what to say about this, actually. Uh, this this heal comp they have right now for Wichita State is very brawl-based, because it's very area of effect. We want everyone near you, but that's what you run over Ryan. They're not running the Ryan, so there's really no way they can pocket a Russian Ball and running around the point. So it's a unique one, but on their side, Cincinnati, they're running a Tracer, which everything else is a brawl comp, so a lot of kind of hybrid half-and-half -half things, and it's going to be Dynamite falling first. Perhaps just looking for those openings on whatever might feel most comfortable for this team. Fluffy but deadly just trying to create some space up top. Not able to find too much though. Putting themselves up towards that minefield as quickly as possible. A nice pile driver gonna be going in there, but it might come at the cost of their life. It will come at the cost of Keller Gill's mech. As they're just trying to fire away with that Diva Buddy Blaster. Nobody having possession of the point just yet, but and Dog looking to clear up with those pulse pistols. Yeah, this comp, I, I just don't think it works really for what you're trying to do in Wichita State University. I think if you want to go for the Wrecking Ball, go for it, but hard commit to this kind of chaos style that you want to run. Flexicution on the Somber, I love that. Dynamite on the McCree. Uh, that's a much more immobile hero. They kind of are going to be caught out completely. They are Glass Cannon, and they're, they're going for now a Lucio Zenyatta. So this is something that, I mean, if you're a fan of over -early wa Overwatch, you've probably seen it a few times. This used to be what Dive was before Mercy became meta, back in like 2017. God, like, feels like forever ago now <laughs> thinking about it. But, I, I mean, you could spam away with the Zen, but again, you're, you are yourself are going to be a Glass King. You'll be very vulnerable if they go after you. Oh, a nice pile driver on to the amplification field that takes down the majority of that high ground. You're gonna be lucky but deadly, mitigating a lot of the space that this team of Cincinnati can have to be the high new trying to come out from Dynamite. It just results in their death as the hacking flux execution forces the trans locate. And University of Cincinnati still not out of this fight just yet. So far, their supports doing a good job of keeping each other alive, but they're not quite out of the clear just yet. Lucky but deadly still rolling out there. Yeah, and I, I was wondering if they'd try to commit the EMP there to finish this fight up. It's still not over. There are still people alive for Cincinnati. They are not falling quick enough for this point to be fully capped. There's going to be a high noon coming out seed almost at the Transcendence, but there are no place to try to body block it. And this fight's going to move on. It looks like they might have just given up the point there. There is going to be the cap, but things are still happening here. Yeah, this fight's certainly not done and dusted just yet, but as the McCree and Reinhardt fall, it will be the Baptiste using that immortality field just to get the rest out. And I love this. Dynamite going to the Tracer is exactly what they need. I think a Tracer mm -hmm. or an Echo, something that's fast, you can get in and out of situations really quickly and has good survivability. That's what they need to follow up with this Wrecking Ball. It's going to be running around. The, the Zenyatta still is, I think, the one that's kind of out of place. But if Seed can stay out of trouble and just play a good far away angle and they aren't run up on, they're just going to have sight lines for days. They're going to have great Discord orbs. And that Transcendence, you know, it can be used as a get out of jail free card if they really need it to be. Seed right now playing a little bit farther from their team, not going to have the peel as quickly from their D.Va or the Lucio EMP online for Execution drops it, hits a three, and with that shoot, can't drop that immortality field. A great opportunity to focus here, but they just can't get brought down. Eventually, the D.Va Bomb takes down two, however, a great opening. As what Flapjack's left swinging at a translocated Sombra, Wichita State doesn't miss the Transcendence, but it does force the University of Cincinnati back for a moment. They still have the sound barrier. That's what this gives you. It's, it's like goats. 
two defensive ults, usually you don't have that. There is a really nice Earth Shatter on line foot flapjacks. So there's no shield to block it at all. So they have to make sure that they hit their Mirth. They gotta make sure they get everyone down, especially the Wrecking Ball possible. They don't even need to kill the Wrecking Ball off the back of it. They need to make sure that they're immobile so they can't do anything. But I mean, with this Town Barrier, they're gonna be enabled to go in. The Earth Shatter goes on a line, and it's gonna be the Minefield rocking that Reinhardt, making sure he tries to stay as in place as possible. University of Cincinnati already up two, though. This is a great opportunity. Poppy Van Deadly continues to build up that old charge once again, getting a pile driver right in that health pack room. Cincinnati, again, leading in these kills, looking to steal up this point. They just have to deal with the remaining numbers. Yeah, they do, they will, Prosecution, will they try to contest? No, they just get out, but they're still a Lucio, so this is great. Oh. Just stall out to 99 or as long as you can. It's one fight territory for you, but it's also one fight territory for Cincinnati, and yeah. their all bank is looking very, very good right now. Everything besides their tank ultimates are online, and if the fight goes well enough, they might even be able to get those in the middle of it. Wichita State, they're going to need a life-saving transcendence here, I think. They're going to need C to have the most amazing Zenyatta ultimate of all time, but oh. you don't even need the ultimate. C needs oh. to pop off. And then getting the other support as well. That is so valuable there for the side of Wichita State right now. Things are in their pockets. Their opponents don't have that much healing as well. The Mercy Rise is going to be coming through, keeping Dynamite, Dynamite back in at this fight. And Doc does get taken down, but it does take down Seed rather. But it looks like it's just going to be the Diva trying to hold their own as this point now slowly going to be working towards getting flipped. But you need to make sure somebody stays here, Jack. You also have to make sure that your target priority is correct right now. The Brigitte is the least mobile on the field. You need to kill her because they're just going to keep having heals, especially if she's able to do some damage now. Maybe you get the final shot. No, you don't. This is just so back and forth right now, Sir Waltham. It really is. Wet Flapjacks just trying to flail around, find whoever they can, knowing that their supports and DPS are trying to oh, do their job. Touch. But nobody gets on point they from Wichita point. State because of that Cincinnati wins. Oh no, oh dear, wow. oh dear, oh dear. It looks like Cincinnati might have been turning the tide of that fight anyway. It looks like they got one kill at the end that might have been the swing's momentum in their favor completely, but I mean, that's just so unfortunate. You never know how things can be, right? Especially if you're Wrecking Ball still alive. Maybe you're able to stay alive long enough where the team can regroup. But uh, they just, they won that fight and they never flipped the point. The entire time, even after they got all those great kills, even after they killed both supports that were on the side of Cincinnati, they never actually got point percentage once again. If they'd be able to do that, who knows where we'd be, but couldn't do it. Got off the point for just a split second. That overtime timer is not forgiving at all near the end. The longer it goes on, the faster it'll go down as soon as things, as soon as the fighting stops, as soon as you've got no one touching it. And there, Wichita State are going to lose this first map in dramatic fashion. Yeah, and the drama I anticipate, Jack, this is just my guess here. It's going to keep going, right? This was just a preview of what I expect to see from these two teams, right? It was it was pretty white knuckle there, especially during that last fight, and I don't expect that to stop as we look towards our next map, which we discussed earlier, it's going to be Numbani. Yeah, and I got to think, you know, if that support lineup for Wichita State was the Mercy and the Zanyata from the beginning, I think that's a great comp to run with what everything else was, but they didn't go to, to it towards the very end. They never got a Valkyrie. So who knows, you gotta look ahead towards the future here. And Mbani, that could be a great opportunity to run the Wrecking Ball once again. Um, I think Winston is a better option than the Wrecking Ball here because, you know, sometimes when you try to use your hook to get up to places, sometimes it isn't the best angle for you and it's kind of mm -hmm. awkward. So maybe they go for a Winston double bubble sort of comp. We did see that a bit earlier. It worked out pretty well for RIT. And it seems like Wichita say they are comfortable running a dive, but we also saw that from Cincinnati on the first map on City Center. And I think both teams that have tried running those kind of more divey comps, uh, they've never, they haven't won the rounds they've run them on. It seems like both teams are winning with Brawl alone. So we'll see how that works out as we go into a map that's not Brawl favored at all. It's gonna be interesting to see how these teams change the dynamic. You're absolutely right on that, Jack. One thing I know I'm certainly excited for, but Cincinnati putting themselves in a very good spot as now they lead over their opponents in WSU. but. Of course, we are going to be heading to Numbani here in just a moment. And Jack, do you think we see the Echo come out at the start? Or do you think it's another thing we see that is kind of switched to later if the pushes don't work? I think it makes more sense to use the Echo from the get-go because mm -hmm. she can fly up and she can contest that high ground. I mean, her one-shot potential is still so strong. She can just sticky someone and then use her focusing beam, which does a ton of damage if you are at half health. So it can easily melt people. It looks like Cincinnati agrees with me is they're at least for now going to be circling over that echo pick. Maybe it'll be changed later on, but I, I think that's a great idea. And again, Wichita State, they're coming out with this Lucio Moira, which just, it, it works for your Torbjorn. It works for your McCree. It can work for your D.Va. 
but it doesn't work for your main tank for your wrecking ball and that's where i mean wrecking ball you can just run around and you know try to get health packs but you know zen yada is really good here mercy is really good here because i mean zen orb it'll travel with you it'll stay on you even if it's not a ton of healing the Mercy, she can fly to you, so she can heal you up in fights, and then she can go fly to someone else. As we see, the Mercy is going to be coming up from Cincinnati, so I think we should all stay. Like, I, I like that they're trying this Wrecking Ball comp. I just think that they need to make a few adjustments to really perfect it, see if it works out this time. Slavic but Deadly still working on getting their chops perfected here, as they do a little bit of scouting, but quickly back up once they realize Cincinnati might be gone in their direction. Cincinnati looking a little bit split on their push. We see the Echo high up in the sky, but everybody else going below the ground, going through that underground area, or that interior shop area. White Flapjack's immediately taking advantage of Fluffy but Deadly, not able to get that healing, as you mentioned, and now we're going to be seeing the Torborn a little bit low and getting the shots off as well. Speaking of the shots, I was being able to take down that Torborn with one final revolver shot. Shot. Not just the ones who trying to do some massive bleed damage as well, the melee shots on the player. This is all looking great for Cincinnati on the start. Yeah, they're able to force him the point, or at least they force a few members from Wichita State. And then they just went for the Torgorn, who's immobile, couldn't get healed up. Went for that, and then from there, after they got that first pick, they cleaned up the point. This is what I was talking about. Winston rules here. I mean, Wrecking Ball is still alright, but Winston, just the fact that you can test high ground, the fact that you've got your bubble, the fact that you can actually do so much damage with your Tesla Cannon, I feel like Tesla Cannon is a very overrated weapon. You don't have to aim with it, so you just you focus fire someone down and they can get melted. They are a great push, and I mean, look what they're doing right now. Look at how much space they're taking yeah. on the second point. They're all the way around the corner, and the cart isn't anywhere near there, but just setting themselves great for their next fight. And Wichita State looking like they're still trying to figure out what they need to do here. We see Fluffy but Deadly playing very aggressive up ahead, but that's not what you want to do going against somebody as aggressive as Osmeen, who has that stun, who has the rest of their team right behind them. In the immediate, however, it looks like Wet Flapjack's going to be going and pushing right up ahead. Actually, he can back up onto the high ground, I believe, from that pile driver. And with this, looking to just continue to barrel ahead as Cincinnati keeps getting these kills. And one thing that's very interesting to me is that Cincinnati, they swapped up their support lineup a little bit. They've put in SMG, who's now playing flex support, and Shu, who was on flex support last time. They're now on the main support role. So I'm wondering if they did that, maybe these main support, you know, just generally, like, you can... That's, like, the, your, your center of comms. They're the one who's shot calling. They're the one who's alt tracking. They're the one who's fight planning. I'm not sure why they made this swap. Maybe it's just cool, but whatever it's doing, it's working, because right now Cincinnati's on a roll. Yeah, and it looks like Wichita State breaking just a little bit. Keller Hill caught out away from the rest of their team. The Mercy looked like they might have been going for a res, but it's only going to be the minefield trying to buy any sort of breathing room for the defending team. Old Core now coming out, but with the res going on to wet flapjacks, not much has been achieved here from Wichita other than losing a few members. Yeah, Fluffy but Deadly just rolled right into the entire team of Cincinnati. Maybe they had a chance to get out. They don't use it. They grab it on just almost online. They have so much to use right here. This might be the end. The High Noon is going to buy a little bit of space currency of Dynamite. Does take down O-Speedy. Looks like they may have been trying to go for some high ground of their own. Now the grab from Silver Talon is going to be thrown out. But Dynamite able to lock down that tank form. And now Wet Flapjack throwing into the primal hour. Continually get packed down by that turret. And suddenly Wichita State come out when they're forced to group up. They're looking pretty good. Yeah, once that transcendence comes out, unless you're able to hit the antinate that cancels out all the healing, you back up. You committed way too much there, you used the primal rage as well. Um, and I, I think also just like losing a speedy actually at the beginning might have just been the, you know, the message to say like, hey, maybe we just play this a bit more passively, we look for picks, and then maybe if we get something we go in. They really wanted to use that grab, you could tell the way that they were positioning themselves, the way that Silver Tom was going in, that they wanted to use it right off the bat. But they still have a nano, they still have a duplicate. As we see, they're trying, trying to find any way they can poke and prod, but Silver Talon perhaps poking a bit too much gets taken down. Fluffy but Deadly taking a wailing as well, but has their team to keep them alive, that Baptiste. That's well so good at building your team's resistance to that damage. Now it's like barreling ahead as they be careful to not peek around that open angle. And I think that we talked about this actually for the last matchup when we saw um, the bonding between Sienna and RIT was that I said, third point, you gotta swap, you gotta go brawl. And this is exactly why. There isn't enough high ground for you to contest. You run in as a Winston, you get kind of mowed over. And now we're gonna see some swaps. They do have some ultimates, they don't wanna go for a full swap. And I mean, why not? Your Echo's still fragging. Echo's still doing very good. And now Calakil able to get that drop from on high. We'll see Wichita State look to try to continue this push forward. It's gonna be the Torgor popping that overload. This Zarya is just absolutely juiced now. And O Speedy looking to wrap around that Reinhardt. Almost gets swung on, but the damage is too quick for that final swing to hit. Still need to kill. Caligula is just chilling on the cart right now. This is a good push, 
but the spawn is so good for Wichita State. They still have a shatter. I don't. Do they even touch? I'm not sure. They might not be able to get there in time. Oh, seed certainly won't as they get taken down. High noon comes out. Earth shatter online as well. The Torgo gonna be making a last minute barrel roll towards the point. The Barrage Ball coming on a line and are able to get some molten core thrown on, but it's not gonna matter as University of Cincinnati delivers to third either way. And if anyone tells you that being short is a disadvantage, don't let you tell them that because that Torbjorn just ran onto the point and <laughs> no one realized they were there until the very end of the fight. A great play of execution to keep the objective alive. They did not see nine this time around, but still could not win the fight. Just too many ultimates online for Cincinnati. The grab just putting everyone in one place. The duplicate getting the Torbjorn. Molten Core coming out at the end wasn't even needed. They were able to win off of just one primary fire alone there. Cincinnati. They could have had a lot more time, but three mm -hmm. minutes is still one heck of a good time here on Numbani. You certainly have to agree, and now Wichita State, not in the position of having to get a great time bank, but just in the position of having to finish. That should be their primary focus here, as they are now going to be coming out on the attack. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what you got to go for, right? This is a hybrid map, so if they finish with less than a minute, then they don't really have a chance to win the map. Um, I think they actually, they, they, they do get a minute. Um, and the extra time will go to Cincinnati. If they finish about any time, then that's where they can't win that. The only thing they can do is draw there. So right. you got to think, you, you want to finish with probably at least a minute and a half to really give yourself a chance. Two minutes would be great. Obviously, equal or more time would be amazing. But, I mean, objecto numero uno. Finish the map regardless of time. But you can't worry too much about that. You get to the overtime round, the extra rounds, when you got to deal with it, eventually later down the line. And it looks like, for the most part, Wichita State still wants to run this rushing ball comp. We'll see if Wichita State are able to make it work now on the offense. Might be able to jostle University of Cincinnati, dislocate O Speedy if they're able to mit avoid that flashbang, but that's a big if. Let's see Flex execution now. Going underneath on that boutique area as the rest of Wichita goes up towards the high. Wet Flapjack just gonna be sidestepping the Diva and focusing instead on the rest of the team. The Diva gonna be getting DMX by the entirety of the University of Cincinnati squad either way. Now, Kelly Gill able to take down O Speedy, so there's a lot of your cooldowns that you have to worry about if you're talking about Deadly Gone out of the way. Either way, both teams training slowly but surely. And the looking a little bit favorable, or a little bit even, rather, as the response pretty equal for these two sides. Cincinnati still trying to hold on to this high ground, and Wrecking Ball trying to find the capitalizations there, but it looks like they're really struggling to do it, Jack. Where is this fight going? This is going way <laughs> past the first point. They're chasing all the way in. They're going to oh, have no. the Diva feed D-Mech, but we saw last time they didn't actually end up falling, and it's going to be Silver Talon. That's the Optane that falls first. We are seeing a few kills still come out through this fight that Winston came very close, but Red Flapjack's able to get to their team's regroup and healing back online before they drop. And that looked actually very good for it, which does save for a little bit, but they just chased so far. They were... A little bit of uh, tunnel visioning there, I would say. They were trying to go for kills to plan the objective. I mean, you get one or two ticks. That makes it so much easier to finish off the point later on. Instead, they get nothing out of it. They're just sent back to spawn. The ultimates, again, are still not in their favor. All they have is the coalescence of going up against almost six ultimates on the other side. I like that adaptation from Kella Gill. Deciding to check that corner, make sure that Winston is there. And they put a little bit of fire into it. However, it just enables Cincinnati to get real aggressive and push here. See, it tries to go in with the coalescence, but it doesn't really find as much as it needed to. Yeah, it just didn't, it also didn't really build up enough for them going to the next fight. They will have mines, they will have a pulse one, they will have a high noon, but it's still five ultimates for Cincinnati. They're going to have everything except that nano that they just used. Uh, there is no defensive vault really to counter anything that's coming out from Chita State, so that might be their one leg up. But Chu does have the mercy unlocked, does have that resurrection, so even if they get that opening pick, it, it doesn't mean it's going to be permanent. We can see it, and now Wichita State once again going for that low ground control here. Gonna be the Wrecking Ball going up on the high, but you can dive onto the auto and not expect to get slapped. Grab does go out from University of Cincinnati, doesn't really collapse onto a whole lot, however. Echo trying to take his dual execution, and it's now gonna be a Tracer versus Tracer duel, however. Andoc has the duplicate, and Ospini getting the kill on the Flexi Pieces. Gonna be equalizing things just a little bit. The Wrecking Ball trying to put the damage into that McCree, eventually taken it down by Dynamite's Flash Bang. And with this now, it's looking like Wichita State might have a chance. They just need to run everybody off the point and stay there. They do, but they're not on the point. They're still fighting elsewhere. This 
Kel this Diva Kelkel is gonna use their upstruck just to get rematched. We'll get the mech back, and they still haven't gotten a tick. There's time actually now for Universal Cincinnati to regroup and get back in this fight. Yeah, Lexicon tried their best to keep on that point, but it wasn't enough. There was still just a little bit of contest. Lucky, but definitely as well trying to focus down onto this Echo, but it will be the Tracer helps them out. And now, again, Wichita State has an opening, but they just don't seem to really push it too much. Yeah, and I thought losing Chu would be huge because it's about that mercy, about that resurrection. That is just a great signal for you to go in, for you to finalize this point. But again, nothing gains, and all they have is a coalescence. Maybe a pulse bomb and all is said is done for Utah State University, but Silver Talon, he used that grab at the beginning of the fight, didn't get any value of it, and still has it once again. I'm telling you, man, Silver Talon has been very impressive on the Zarya today. Have to agree, it's definitely been a good look so far. But now the University of Cincinnati in a very good win condition here as they just need to hold on to this point, not let it go all the way and get more time on their opponent's bank. And it's already a great start with them taking down Fluffy and Flex as now Cincinnati looking to just sink that Moira and the Lucio, who are the only real pests on at that point. Flashbang goes out, doesn't connect, but the Winston pushing everybody away certainly does. And with that, Cincinnati takes the money in a clean fashion. It's not as dramatic as last time, but again, Wichita State, they have people alive and they aren't able to get on the point. I think that's happened basically every time they've lost. I mean, the two points they lost on Oasis, I mean, obviously the last round was much more important, but I'm pretty sure the second round as well, there were people alive and they just weren't able to get on at the very end. Uh, could be wrong, I have to rewatch the pod to confirm that one or not, but there, Moira coming in just at a second late, a, a moment too soon in some places, but not in this case didn't touch in time to get the overtime ticker going. And I got to say, Silver Talon, I was just commending them for great Zarya play, but two grabs in a row, both of them missed. I think they are trying to calculate when Fluffy but Deadly would come in and would, you know, pin them in the middle of their pile driver, but neither time it connected. But it doesn't matter because when you're a high charge Zarya, you were putting out all kinds of damage on your opponents. And to be fair, it felt like a lot of times they didn't need to focus down Fluffy but Deadly. Fluffy but Deadly was either out of the fight or got taken out rather early each it felt like each engagement and it did not set the tempo well for wichita state so definitely something they may look to rectify in these next few maps and we'll see if they are able to rectify it on volskaya which could be potentially our last map but before we go to it we're going to be taking a short break but don't go anywhere folks we'll be back for map three in just a jeffy
And we are seeing a little bit of a stark contrast here, a Jag, between Oasis and Numbani. Oasis was fought tooth and nail by uh, both these teams. And Cincinnati, looking like they're going to take Numbani a little bit more handily. I'm curious as to what's necessarily happening behind the scenes. Yeah, you know, uh, it was very close. Went all the way on Oasis. 99-99 on that last point. 2-1 overall. And then Numbani was a full... Full cap and a full hold for Cincinnati on their offense and defense, respectively. So they did very, very well. It seems like Wichita State needs to get out of a funk. I'm not sure exactly what's going on over there, but you can kind of tell the way they're playing. This is not what you expect from them. It's not that usual gold standard. So maybe that first map really hit them hard. It's got to recover. Got to take a few punches, move on, and maybe uh, switch off the Wrecking Ball because I don't think it's working. It looks like they will try the Wrecking Ball once again on defense. This is a very intriguing comp, but I do like the support lineup. I do like the fact that you have a Sigma with a Torbjorn, so you're going to have a shield for that turret. Yeah. This could work, but it, I mean, you're looking at Cincinnati and they're running the Nano Blade, so that's going to be their own condition. So your own condition basically is to make sure that Seed is alive so you can use your Transcendence to counteract it. Certainly, it seems to be a valid plan there, but oh, Speedy, we're going to be. Really trying to oppress a dynamite on that echo, as we can already see. And now it looks like Cincinnati gonna be taking advantage of the open choke, just trying to go up towards that high ground, or at least trying to get themselves towards that high ground. But Ospeedy getting taken down rather early on. Good recognition from Dynamite to throw in that cluster, get the capitalization off the back end of that. But you're gonna have to be trying to duel this at Genji, but can only do so much that Genji has to dash out when they get to that half health. That gets out with their life to spare, but I mean, the rest of the team is still stuck kind of in this room, they can't really move out, so they're gonna have to go for a full engage before. I think right now, Cincinnati, they're waiting for someone from Wichita State to just go too close to the sun. They want both of a deadly to run in and get cornered. Looks like they're not gonna fall for it just yet, but now as they rotate to the high ground, this is where you gotta be careful with Wichita State. You've got a lot of players on that offset high ground. They could just run into you. And if you're fluffy but deadly here, you gotta know that you can just wait your time for a moment, wait for them to get nestled onto that high ground, and then knock one or two of them off, really relocate them, but as the time is, Wichita State continuing to hold University of Cincinnati in these buildings, not letting them get too cozy in any one particular spot. Dynamite has that duplicate online. Will they be opting into it remains to be seen. Execution, not allowed to have a turret standing too long in these fights, it certainly seems. Oh, Speedy, staying back far away from their teams, gets a couple shots on the Dynamite, but can't quite close the kills as they need to. Oxygon taken down, but it comes at the cost of O Speedy themselves. Seeking now trying to build up that last little bit of of Transcendence to keep their team alive for the coming Nano Blade. And Cincinnati now finally clawing back some progress on this point. I need to kill the Zarya, just so I charge. They trade out, and the trade is not going to work in your favor. Now it's just Dynamite on this Echo. Went for the duplicate. I mean, in that scenario, you gotta go for the Ryan. You gotta give yourself a shield to just protect yourself. They went for the Zarya instead. Not sure if that was on purpose or a misclick. It was a good first point defense. They kill more than two minutes off the clock. They built some ultimates in the process, but now Cincinnati, they, they do have that blade. They don't have the nano though. So that's that's very important to realize is that they can go for this blade. Transcendence is gonna be online. It's gonna be even more effective because there's less damage coming out from and dog. Yeah, significantly less opportunity for something to get messed up on the side of Wichita. We see those mines go out, and Dog is hunting out for any opportunity to get a blade, but with SMG going down early, it looks like they may be rethinking their push instead, just taking a little bit of time to get regrouped. Yeah, I mean, you gotta go for the full regroup right now. It looks like they back up a little bit. The spawn is farther away, so now they gotta wait. And, I mean, if you're Cincinnati, like, my, my thing would just say, like, wait to use all your ultimates, honestly. Just, like, build up your full ult bank. You're already very close to having all six. Utah State, you know they just use one, so they're not going to have nearly as many as you do. You can be a bit patient with that. The other thing, though, is you have to give Silver Talon charge, because right now they're at zero and they're not doing any damage. Silver Talon going to be receiving full charge for their personal barrier. Still has projected, but trying to chase this Wrecking Ball is going to buy a lot of time, and therefore a little bit of charge off the bank. However, projected onto the right heart going to be keeping them down. Fluffy but deadly getting focused out by that grab. However, that Wrecking Ball going to be able to come back rather quickly. See the High Noon come online from the high ground. Kelly Kill throws the shield, but can't quite keep their team alive. A nice reaction time there from the Zenyatta. Keeping their team alive. Flexecution as well, throwing in the Molten Core to try to get some change up happening here. But Flex Jack's getting caught in a very uncomfortable position, taking it down, and uh, getting the sound barrier as well as the blade out. And with this, it looks like University of Cincinnati got to be starting to make some progress. They are going to get at least one tick, probably two, but Deadly 
can't get boot back oh, like no. that. No one can touch now. They do get a touch though on the points of Doom Fist. It's the emergency Doom Fist. And now it's just going to be a snowball effect. They're just going to keep throwing bodies at the point. But I think Cincinnati should win this sooner than later. Dynamite tries to make something happen with the duplicate onto the Zarya, but you can only do so much. You're going to get torn from that duplicate form. Grace or your baby Diva rather getting taken it down. Now it's the Wrecking Ball Mines trying to come in. The Doof is still trying to be that distraction and the disruption as necessary. The Wrecking Ball Fluffy, but Deadly can only do so much. The Genji closing the distance and with this final ticket achieved by Cincinnati. Oxicon tried to jump in. She tried to sell that point as long as possible. Ended up just meeting a fistful of mines, I think. Or no, actually, the mines were on their team. She just ran into a Ryan hammer. Uh, that's what happens. Ryan does a lot of damage with that hammer, so you gotta avoid where he swings if you can. In that if case, you, can. you cannot, because you're just trying to stay on point as long as possible. I think there, the biggest thing was that, you know, the, the transcendence is forced out from seed, and I don't blame them for using it because, like, if you don't use it then, like, you might not get an opportunity to use it later. So they, they use it on the point, they try to stall it out. They saw off a lot of time, I think about a minute and a half ish. But the biggest misplay was Lexecution going way too far with the Molten Core. They ran into the Ana, they got slept, they got anti and then the anti nade will completely cancel out the Transcendence that was still going on. So they were very vulnerable. Kill off the, you know, the man from Sweden. And then it's just lights out because C isn't going to be caught out by the blade that's going to be coming out just momentarily once that Transcendence is gone. So if they had kept their Torbjorn aligned, if their Lexecution hadn't gone too far out, Potentially, they could have sold it out a bit longer. I still think Wichita State is going to lose that one just because they're a bit outmatched. They didn't have as much firepower as they needed to win it. But it's it's a good defense. I mean, 2 minutes two minute 36, uh, that is still a good time for Cincinnati. But I it's just like, you know, Wichita State, they had a much better, I think, first point defense than they had second point. Um, they were able to get a first pick, but Cincinnati never really fully disengaged. They just kind of waited to regroup. And because of that, they were waiting right at the door and then they just ran in. Certainly the way it appears to be. We'll see if Wichita State can perhaps change their fortune a little bit here as now they look to lean in. Bobby but Deadly still going to be on this wrecking ball. Going to be making it a little bit difficult for O Speedy to necessarily get nestled in behind their shots, their angles that they really want. Dynamite's going to be going out but not finding a whole lot. That's going to be the Discord received from C. Now, as we can see, this fight already started to take place and a nice headshot coming in from O Speedy to kick things off. Dynamite taken down. No opportunity for the Reds, that will be right in the middle of the battlefield. The Mercy didn't want to necessarily commit herself there. Now look, you know, just trying to escape there with the shields, with their kinetic grasp. They can only do so much. That shield, of course, does have that two-minute, two-second reclaim time. They do get Andog on the way up. That's all they're going to get. She does have the resurrection. There it is. They use it. So all is not lost. And it's interesting because right now Cincinnati is trying to mirror which I'll see it for the most part, and they are doing a great job at it. I mean, you saw that there's another huge anti that comes in. SMG just lights everyone up. They go for the dash, but oh, oh my goodness, what just happened? Red Flapjacks just got knocked off the map. Yeah, you don't see that too often, especially with the Wrecking Balls, who have that grapple to save themselves in situations like those. And then, oh, Speedy getting taken down with a headshot from C. This is a great opportunity for Wichita State. Fluffy, but Deadly just has to quit playing around with that Genji. He said finds the Ana. Not the most ideal situation, but maybe, perhaps, they can find an advantage here. It's gonna be the focusing beam on the Genji and Dog, able to turn the corner, however, get themselves to a little bit of safety. The Ana now taking down SMG, not gonna have any sleeps, not gonna have any anti-nades to keep their teams alive, or the opposing team weakened, uh, weakened a little bit, which cost State continues to try to keep this area superiority as the Sigma rains from on high, just throwing in the shield and being a distraction in general. Yeah, and one thing to remember is that the Sigma shield has been buffed a little bit. It does come out a little bit quicker. The cooldown time is less, but it's still not great. It's not as good as it used to be. The Sigma was not able to protect a lot of people. This looks like it's going the way Wichita State, but they need to clean up this fight. They need to put it away. We've seen that time and time again. They've had the advantage, and then it just kind of slips out of their fingers. The Mercy Bell keeping at this point alive for quite a while. What Flapjack's going to be throwing in the Transcendence when the team perhaps wasn't fully committed to this. Bob now going to be thrown out onto the field. No Zenyatta to mitigate all that damage. But Flexecution, luckily enough, catching two out on that, that Mercy. It will be the second tick achieved for Wichita State, so it's not all loss. Bob is the hard carry there. Gets two point two. That won't happen. I think a bunch of people just got booped off. I was going to say they weren't contesting the point. They gave him another tick, and that Dragon Strike is going to go straight through Silver Talon. They're not going to be long for this world. There is still Andog on the point, so it's still not being capped. It's still not fully finished for Wichita State. This feels like a tag team match right about now, Jag. Every time two members go out, two more go in for their team, respectively. But finally, it's going to be Wichita State who managed to get a backup and a regroup with a one or two more pushes left in their pocket. 
Yeah, this is quite a matchup, brother. I know that we want to cast wrestling together one day, one way or another. So you know, this might be a time to try that out. As, I mean, this is just all over the place. It's like, uh, it's like a 12-man tag basically. Everyone's going on to the point. No one's actually finding kills, and at the end of the day, still not enough. But that's a huge accretion to shut down the Dragon Blade. Yeah, and interestingly enough, Kelly Hill not going to be using the Kermitic Lux to hold down that Genji. Of course, you can just keep that Genji locked in place, not able to dash, not able to move. Minefield's now coming out from Fluffy, but Deadly will be trying to zone out that point, make it all that much harder for the defense to really get locked onto. It's going to be the Genji who is taken down. Eventually now, Andar going to have to be taking the long walk from home as Dynamite gets rezzed up by their mercy. Now we see the opportunity for Wichita State to once again come in big here. Dynamite. Going in with the duplicate, has the opportunity to get a bob of their own onto the field and a nice kinetic grasp. The Riddick Flux rather gonna be coming in from Kelly Gill, pushing that high ground pressure up. Lexicution coming back on the Zoltar also seems to have done some work. Uh, there's still a chance now. They're able to get that first point. They use a lot, but they have to support ultimates. So there is a possibility. Maybe they can just run in and try to take this point quickly. They could actually win this out now and maybe take it with a little bit more time. But as versus Wimble, probably a little bit less if they get it on this push. They know it's kind of now or never, but they're going to be running right into the Dravidic Flux. Uh, the pile driver into the Dravidic Flux, a great opportunity. But Wet Flapjacks has to retreat. And because of that, the Nano not able to get too much from them. Wet Flapjacks has to take another knee. Not able to really get as much benefit as you would really like in that situation. Oh, Speedy going to get caught out by the Wrecking Ball. But the Wrecking Ball put to sleep courtesy of SMG helping their team out there. A lot of damage going in towards that Echo as well. But Oh, Speedy just not quite able to connect in those last few moments. And Wichita State had a great opportunity, but just got stifled. Yeah, I think this you got to do if you're Cincinnati. you got to control the pace of this match. we got to make sure that you force Wichita State to play a bit slower. Right now, they just want to run in. They want to be super aggressive. You have to force them into being passive, but you can't oh. do that if you lose your Mercy. We're going to see what Flapjacks throw in the minefield. It's going to be the Soldier 76 popping the attack of Pfizer. A lot of damage trying to connect here. It's going to be what Flapjacks bring brought dangerously low. Mercy could be able to get back onto the field if Wichita State can't go ahead and get a few more kills in their pocket. They take care of Bob, but that's only so much. Bobby but Deadly now returning a minefield of their own. Trying to drop the pile driver. Takes down Silver Talon. Cincinnati now reeling in their health pools. And Dog going to be taken down with a quick swift melee. And they had the blade in their pocket. They may want to have used that a little bit earlier. They only couldn't. And now progress taking up for Wichita. Nobody can be able to test. No touches in sight. A minute less, but a full cap. For Wichita State, the first time we've seen them do it today on a objective map that wasn't control. So great job by them to stay alive. It took them a little bit longer than they wanted to to get that second point fully done with, but they still have a chance. There's, there's a chance. That's the biggest thing to throw off him. Uh, they could draw this. I mean, there's a possibility we go to a map four and no one wins this because it is 2 CP. It is assault, and that happens more often than I'd like it to, honestly, but... It just it doesn't feel great when there's no winner, right? Like these two teams, they go head to head for so long, and then no one actually gets the point permit. I don't know, man. Not a fan of it, but regardless, you know, it's gonna be keep. It's a good thing for Wichita State. Like, they obviously want to win this and get themselves a bit closer. They don't want to have to win another three maps after already playing three, but just winning this one or drawing it out, staying alive in the series, that's what they need. It looks like they are playing much more confidently than they have previously. But I gotta say, this this map in particular, it has just been all over the place. I don't really know. <laughs> why Cincinnati decided to mirror because it seems like they were doing a really great job on the brawl looks like maybe they're trying to have some fun themselves but you never want to count your opponent out you never want to get too comfortable because that's when your opponent has the best chance to strike yeah and you know, even if they don't win right the regaining of the confidence from Wichita State you know let's say that was the biggest factor in Numbani suddenly if that goes away University of Cincinnati now has another real fight here but Flapjacks as well not looking as strong on that wrecking ball as Fluffy but definitely putting themselves in a lot more risk but we'll see now as Wichita State can be rolling out for their turn on a second attack. We see the Echo coming out, taking that high window area, just trying to throw out any spam damage they can. Probably the Deadly trying to go perhaps for an early knockoff onto the icy waters of Volskaya. Not able to find too much, however, does force out the flashbang from most speedy, but it doesn't really matter as there's not much else to collapse with. Now it's just these two teams trading a few shots of execution with that long range hit scan in the soldier. Medium range, I should say. Hit scan on the soldier. Really trying to get that damage in, but seen as the first one to fall, that's a weak spot for Wichita State. They'd like that damage and they'd like that healing back if possible. But that being said, Dynamite gonna be looking to take down that immortality field. And because of that, Silver Town now gonna be dropping next. Things well, not quite out of the doghouse just for the side of Wichita yet. They need to regroup. 
this doesn't seem like a push for them. It doesn't. They have 33 seconds, so they just have enough time exactly for one more push. One last hoorah. They're not going to have anything on the board just yet to use it. No, Speedy has just been farming this hot and going to be so close to using it. going to have it online in just any moment, so they can just try to pop that off the get-go. Try to zone enemies out, or they could try to use it as a recontest, but they gotta be careful because look who's right around the corner. It's fluffy but deadly, and this is kind of no man's land for McCurry. You can't roll in the air that did not go through to the live patch, so you get booped off the map and you're not gonna be able to use it. And that was an old change that I just remembered when you said that, Jack. But looking at that fluffy but deadly, gonna be looking to get the knockoff from the high ground, takes down the McCree, and the Sigma's now off the high ground. The Baptiste doesn't throw down the Immortality Field. This might be which toss states a moment. They're gonna be chasing that Mercy. A nice cluster right onto her face, and with that, things are definitely looking good for Wichita State to take this first point. The Baptiste, all that remains, and now some point progress, and suddenly Wichita are back in the fight. Yeah, point progress to point captain. I gotta say, Sir Walton, when I say stuff like that and it happens, I feel like a genius, but I'm sure <laughs> Speedy does not feel the same way right now as they ended up taking the plunge. But the good thing for Cincinnati is that this is so holdful. They have so many more ultimates, but they need to use them right away because Wichita State, they don't have them online just yet, but they are super, super close, so they don't use them quick enough, and it might be a full cap from them. And we can already see the duplicate. Sigma's coming out, both using the kinetic grass. Absolutely brilliant play there, mitigating that high noon, but now it's going to be Andog's turn to try to make something happen. It's going to be the Gravitic Flux coming out from Dynamite, just trying to hold anybody down. Somebody needs to get onto the point. Overtime is ticking down. You've got to be careful with Utah State. We don't want this to happen again. Lines just have to clear point. They've reached one tick. That is progress, no matter how you look at it. The Wrecking Ball so dangerously low. We're at about 50% now for Wichita, but they're losing members. This is not great. The Soldier, the Mercy, they wanted to get some kills back, and that's exactly what they're going to do on the kill, on the Chew, on the Silver Talon. Now, it's a two-on-two -two situation, but the Wrecking Ball ends in Yada. They can only do so much. Oh, Speedy looking to clean it up, and they certainly will. It's a really good push from Wichita State University, considering that they only had a minute and a half, considering that they only yeah. captured the first point in overtime. Getting 60% on the point is very impressive. What it does mean, though, is that there is no way for this to end in a tie. So, we're not going to go home unhappy. One way or another, one of these teams is going to win it. Wichita State, though, they're going to have to have a great defense. It really comes down to the first point. If they can hold out for a while, it's okay if they get up the second one. They build up ultimates. They don't commit too much to the first point if they realize, you know, hey, this isn't winnable. Like, let's not waste anything. Let's keep everything for our last stand, that's how they win this out. So at this point, it's all about pacement, pacing. It's all about how you play your game. It's all about uh, planning it out. That's what I was trying to say. It's all about making sure that you're not over committing to fights that you don't need to. Like you should not be using ultimates until you really, really need to. Like don't use them really as engagements, use them as ways to win later on. Because you can give up that first point and it's totally okay. That's something that I hope WSU goes into this realizing. Is that they commit too hard to the first point, you know, they use the self-destruct, they use the mines, they use a visor, all in vain. And they've got nothing going into their second point defense, and there's still a lot of time for Cincinnati. That's where things can get really, really messy very quickly. And already, I feel like this this particular map has been all over the place. I absolutely agree. And to piggyback off that idea there, Jack, the side of Wichita State is going to have to keep in mind what University of Cincinnati uses and will have in their pocket should they be pushing towards that second point. We don't want a snowball situation here, Dynamite. Initially throwing out a cluster bomb, trying to get some early damage and therefore some early ult charge, but not able to find too, too much. A second cluster has themselves a little bit better as Shu receives a little bit of ult charge for their healing in kind. Cincinnati looking to split their forces perhaps a little bit here, going towards the high ground as that Genji still just continues to roam around. But Cincinnati has the opportunity to take their time, let their plan fully develop, and then react to it. And it's interesting because now Cincinnati has gone back to the Brawl comp, but they don't have a Lucio. They've got Ana and Baptiste, that's a heck of a lot of healing, and the Immortality Field is kind of like a pseudo-defensive ult, but they don't have a real defensive ult. So, you know, things can go sideways really quick because of that, and they also don't have any speed to engage, so they're, they're going through these rotations, but they're just taking such a long time to do so. Steed in a very dangerous spot, but Flexecution trying to have their back, Fox Icon trying to just keep their support alive as well. They don't want to be the only one remaining. Silver Talon, despite this fight taking so long, they're going to be the ones to drop. And now Cincinnati in a very rough spot. Oh, Speedy hitting a wailing as the Reinhardt drops the shield to Fire Strike. You know, with this Wichita State smells the blood in the water, they're going to start pressing into this garage right here. Wet Flapjack's going to decide to just dive into the water. The Sharks can't get you there, apparently. No, they cannot, but you know who is? The rest of your team, they're getting eaten alive by sharks because everyone ends up falling. Here you see the Lucio 
would be really helpful there. Now they're going to be swapping to a dive comp, and I actually really, really like this because they have the nano. If Andog doesn't get that blade online and soon enough, you can just go for the nano wins and you can run in. Actually, now they're going to go for the wrecking ball, so now I don't like it as much. I guess they are going to just go full sail on the nano blade, but Seed, the mad lad that they are, already has that transcendence online, so that is not a guaranteed fight winner. It's not a guaranteed point clincher. It's looking really good for Wichita State right now, I gotta say. Yeah, and Doc's certainly taking up a little bit of time to build that final bit to the blade. They do have it online now. They just have to be very careful. Wichita State awfully clustered for a nano blade to be hitting. And Shu now gonna be throwing in that amplification field, putting in the damage to any wind that scatters, gonna be making it just a little bit harder. But with the kills coming through as they are, it might not be necessary. Kelly Gill and Seed both getting taken down rather early. Dynamite jumped by that Genji trying to get away. Does manage to for a moment, however, it's gonna be the blade coming all blind with the nano. Now the attack of Visor and the Transcendence trying to come online doesn't find too much. Takes down O Speedy, but the question is, was that enough and was it worth it? We mentioned Jack not throwing in too many ultimates in this fight. However, the Wrecking Ball, the Diva all go down. The Ana misses the Sleep Dirt onto the Wrecking Ball, and that means Fluffy, but definitely just wail away and with this. It looks like Overtime's gonna tick down, and Cincinnati not looking so hot on Volskaya. No, it's not. They do get the soldier, though. They get Flexecution. This oh, is one no. of the DPS. They got to pop off. They get the DMAC with the pulse pump, and now it's just a Genji on their loans, so and they're going to get duplicated, but the reinforcements oh. might have arrived just in time. And the duplicate from Dynamite trying to keep the Dream alive here for Wichita, trying to make a play of their own. Going to be getting the Dragon Blade with about five seconds left on their duplicate. Goes for the Wrecking Ball instead of the Diva. The Diva now immediately becomes the target of focus. But this is giving Cincinnati enough time to get some more members back. Mostly that Moira and the Lucio. Now the point of progress to keep the build up. Moira stuck in the bunker away from her team. Can't receive any of the healing or the Matrix. With this overtime ticks down faster and faster until Wichita State claimed their first map for the day. This is the series we expected. Maybe not as all over the place as one, because this is a messy map. Yeah. Like, there's no other way to describe it. Like, I was losing track of who was who. That's how <laughs> messy it was at certain points, because it was just, you know, the mirror matchup is much more difficult to recognize when there is a wrecking ball rolling around. So I was just like, what is going on here? And I was, again, really surprised that Cincinnati went for that mirror matchup because they are so good on Brawl the entire time. That's where they really thrive, but they tried to play the exact same comp and it didn't work out for them. I think that's kind of maybe a sign of, you know, they thought they had this in the bag and they got a little bit too confident. And in the end, they didn't have it in the bag because Wichita State, they do stay alive. They do force that map four, but I'm excited because that does mean that we get to see one of my favorite maps in the game, Route 66. Yeah, I have to agree. We're going to be hearing those whip cracks as we do head into the next map. But Jack, I want to take a moment and reflect at where we've just been. Now, you and I both know, as well as most of the viewers at home will know, hindsight is 2020. You know, you have perfect vision looking in the back mirror, but... Do you think that if Cincinnati stays with the McCree more so than sw switching to the Echo, they sort of stand a better chance at, you know, getting that value that they were looking for with the swaps? I think just stick with the whole comp. I mean, the, the Rhine, the Diva, the Lucio, the McCree, I think it all works out really well for you. So I don't get why you try to play Wichita State at their own game. And it just doesn't work there. Maybe even go for a Winston dive instead because their Winston was very clean. We saw it do, do wonders when we were watching them Bonnie. So play to your strengths. Don't try to play what the other team is going for. I think their McCree and O Speedy just had great opportunities and to think like that high noon that we saw that didn't actually go off on the first point. That could have been the end all be all if they were able to get that off. But I was saying, you know, be clear, careful where you are as a McCree because you can easily get booped off the map in that situation. And they did. They were down in that fight and they were never able to recover that first point. They, just, they had. Again, like I don't like Ana Baptiste. It is a heck of a lot of healing. You do so much healing. You can out heal a lot of damage, but it's your utility. It's not good enough. You gotta hit an anti nade. If you don't do that, I mean Baptiste doesn't really have too many offensive abilities. Obviously, he can shoot and he does a lot of damage, but like other than that, like he's very defensive oriented. So Ana, kind of, kind of defensive oriented as well. Over sleep, anti can let you engage, but it doesn't matter if you hit an anti if you don't have a speed to get around. They took so long to rotate, then they swapped. I was like, yes, the Winston, this is perfect. Go for the Nano Winston. Don't even worry about the blade. Save it for later. Instead, doesn't happen. They do get the Nano Blade off, but it isn't big enough to win them the point. And that's where we are now. 1-2 in the series. Yeah, a good opportunity here for Wichita to really start to climb back. However, looking at the other side of the board for Cincinnati, I am getting word that we're going to be having SMG, the support player, be pulled out. Now Reggie's going to be back in from the first map, so perhaps they're looking to change up their support line just a little bit. Well, it's interesting, you know, because we saw it work out on that first map. Obviously, it was super close on Oasis, so yeah. 
Uh, they decided to go back for what they had in Oasis. Uh, we haven't seen Reggie since that first map, so maybe there's something on that second map again that they didn't they didn't like. Maybe they couldn't put the style they wanted. I'm not exactly sure. Um, it's good though to have subs. It's good to have people that have different um, hero pools so that way you can kind of plug and pull different players when needed. So now I'm wondering if we're going to see Chu go back to the flex support role because they were playing the Ana, they were playing the Baptiste on Oasis. Uh, we saw Reggie come out. They were the one playing main support. She went to the main support. They were playing the Lucio. They were playing the Mercy. So we're seeing that she was very versatile, but sometimes being versatile isn't the name of the game in Overwatch. Sometimes it's better to be committed to a certain role and just be excellent at that instead of being great at two others. I definitely tend to agree. And additionally, if you have subs, you don't have your players being in there the whole time getting fatigued. I think that might definitely start to play a factor if we get into, well, when we get into that fourth and maybe the fifth and later on maps as necessary, it might start to become a factor as these teams start to think, well, you know, their supports haven't been subbing out. We have, so we'll put the fresher man in, maybe get that bare inch of edge over the enemy. That is a good point, but I got a counter argument to that is that oh. If you're coming out and then going back in later, you can come in very cold, where you're not warmed up anymore, you know, your aim is off, um, you're not really in the zone as much. So that can be a bit of a worry. I feel like usually players play best when they're able to play for a while. Obviously, like you said, fatigue is a real thing. Players can get exhausted. They can, you know, it's the same thing. They can kind of lose sight of the game a little bit, but I think they'll just, you know, I, I think it's just two different issues. So it's like, how do you address it? I'm not sure. They're going to go with the sub. They're going to see if that helps them finish off this match. Cincinnati, they're still at match point. Just need one more to get the job done as it looks like they're gonna be running dive, which is not surprising at all. Um, I think this is a very good comp for Route 66, which is State. They're gonna be running the Wrecking Ball, and I feel like we were kind of uh, wondering why Fluffy Be Deadly was trying to run it earlier. No, actually they're gonna go for a brawl, so now, now they're completely flipping the script. Right. They're just gonna play on the point. This is this is a big turnaround. This is really what I like to see from Wichita. We're finally seeing Fluffy but definitely change things up here. And I don't know why, I just like Reinhardt on the Route 66 map choice over the Wrecking Ball. But now, as we look ahead, University of Cincinnati has to see a little bit of progress over to the cart and slowly makes its way around this first turn. And Doc will be trying to rain in those cluster bombs from on high. Not able to find too much as now Fluffy but deadly going in heavy with the swings. Wet Flapjacks has to be very careful. Eventually, we'll be able to back off with the rest of their team. But execution on this Torbjorn, not setting up the turret in any particular spot on the cart. Instead, it's going in with that rivet gun, trying to deal the damage. The OSPD takes it down in the back line, but already the cart's still making some progress, and Cincinnati don't really know, look like they know how they want to contest this. I think they're going to try to run up the stairs, but you're just going to see that Cincinnati, I mean, like, they're going to play the point for a little bit. We should not say they're going to chase them up the stairs, and now Cincinnati's going to get the first kill in this round, so things are looking good for them, as long as they can keep Andog alive. It looks like they do, and... I think from there, this is going to be a fight that's wrapped up. This is what's good about running dive here, is that you can just keep contesting the high ground unless Fluffy but Deadly pops off. They don't. That is the end for sure. So just keep playing the top of the garage. Big girls, just play like right on the cart because it will not move at all. That's going to force Shossi to try to get up to the high ground every time. And it's usually a fight they're not going to win because it's take them so long to wrap around. The only one who can really get up there is a D.Va. And maybe you can throw a seat up there with their... Baptiste jump, but I mean, Baptiste is uh, not going to be strong enough to survive that kind of fight. The question for me becomes, does Flexecution try to commit that Molten Core to the high ground and force Cincinnati to experience the hot foot and maybe pressure them off the high ground, but Wichita State instead just going to be taking the high ground basically for themselves. But Flapjack's going to be thrown in the Primal Rage, displacing everybody who got nestled up onto that high. And it's going to be a flashbang onto the stun. And now the duplicate from Andog going to be looking to gun down their opponent in Torbjorn. That execution trying to find it. Dead Eye gets one, doesn't quite get the duplicate kill. And now it's more than four coming out from Andog. As now it looks like the perhaps strategy has turned around for Wichita. Yeah, it's uh, it's it, the problem is that they just don't have enough movement speed. They don't have enough ways to actually run in like you want to as a brawl you want to just focus down one person as a team and then move on to the next target they can't really do that because everyone inside of cincinnati has movement abilities even reginald on this brigitte can get away with a shield bash or just try to boot people with the whip flail so there's a lot of ways to kind of counteract that aggression that speed it's 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 very good because you can go very fast in one direction but you aren't vertical you can't actually contest the high ground at all and that's the biggest issue with Utah state they do have ultimates they could still try to use that molten core like you said to kind of clear off a high ground or just maybe even clear off the point and then run in from there we'll have to see how they use it 
Oh, Speedy immediately trying to focus down that diva. The diva bomb goes up on high, doesn't find anything. Reginald, however, taken down, and there we see it. The Molten Core onto the high, as well as near the cart. Cincinnati now looking a little bit separated, and that's not exactly how a dive wants to operate, but it looks like the regroup will come in for the boost and for the tracer, and with that, big kills coming in from the Pulse Mine and the Cluster Bombs, an explosive fight for Cincinnati, literally. I have not seen a double shield bash stun in so long, and I'm pretty sure that's what we just saw there, just able to make sure that what Flapjack stays alive. I mean, when you're Brigitte, you want to do damage because it also does healing. It's what enables your Inspire to kill everyone around you, but they're going to make sure that they stun the McCree after they use their Flash Bang. Now, all that Wichita State has is a Shatter and a High Noon to the name. It might be enough, and I really like this rotation, but they got to find an off angle for the High Noon and the... That's what Dynamite trying to do. This Dynamite is going to be in a dangerous spot if they try to use it here. Immediately getting jumped upon. Diva trying to buy them some time, but the Matrix eats it as the Mercy was flying ahead. Couldn't quite get the kill there. Air Shatter goes out onto the Brig as the Shield Bash comes onto the Zarya. Not able to get too much benefit there. And Dog getting the grab online, throwing it in might be big. Gets forced out of that duplicate, however, and then immediately throws another set of Cluster Bombs right into the fight. With the grab, they just delayed. Fantastic performance in Cincinnati. Looking like they're gonna have this point locked down. It's all a matter of how quickly can Wichita State get the kills and then get the respawn. Somebody needs to stay on card as it's just the Reinhardt, the Zarya, and the Moira all trying to get the capitalization onto the supports. They can't kill Kellogg though. Kellogg is so high charged, doing so much damage, even has a Graviton Surge to boot. Whoa. And that looks so winnable for Cincinnati, but the big play beyond Kellogg Yell just getting very fed there is that Fluff of a Deadly hit an amazing one person shatter. Is able to take out Reginald on the Brigitte, able to take out the Rally as well. There isn't going to be a contest here, but I'm not sure if Cincinnati's going to leave the rest of the team there. It's very fancy here. As the oh, Speedy actually gets locked into the grab, takes themselves down with a pulse mine. You hate to see it, but sometimes that's just the way she goes. Well, Flapjacks makes themselves a flying target as the cart gets delivered first. Wasn't the prettiest first point attack, but it gets the job done. However, their timing isn't a suffer due to how long it took. Now they only have two and a half minutes to get around the second point. And I feel like this is where things could really work out for Cincinnati. There's a lot of high ground, even more so than the first point. So the fact that you have the Diva, though, you have the Winston, that you have the Echo, and the, I mean, the Mercy, everyone can just basically get up to the high ground. They're going to switch Reginald back to the Brigitte, which I actually don't know if I like. I think maybe an Ana would be the better choice here, just to have someone with that long-range healing. Um, Brigitte, like, again, she can Shield Bash away, but she can't go up. So she's going to have to play the low ground, or she's going to have to try to play around someone else. Like the Mercy, but the Mercy's just going to keep flying around. Left Flapjack dropping right on the cart, trying to get the clean damage in, but turns around just to meet a Winston, or an Earth Shatter rather. And Dog trying to get that Reinhardt as Fluffy but Deadly shields their team from the Diva Blast. Not able to get anything though, still getting quite a bit of cart contest, but immediately the focus is turned through the Echo and burned down is that player. Now Dynamite continuing to help their team push that cart forward. Yeah, now it's gonna be one fight territory. That fight had to be taken so much sooner for Cincinnati. They had to be jumping on the point as soon as it got across the gate. Instead, now there's only one fight to hold here on the second point. As it gets near the end, Oxicon, she does have that sound bear, so she could just try to use it to cancel whatever and dog uh, copies. So this, things are looking good right now for Wichita. But when Flapjacks has the primal, they buy enough time and they'll start putting some force onto the cart to recontest. It's now going to be Wet Flapjacks going in, and Dog tries to go in for the Earth Shatter, but misses the counter pin now coming in. Absolutely huge from Fluffy, but deadly. This is the kind of performance I was hoping we would see on this Reinhardt. Oh, Speedy trying to play in the back lines, but not able to really lock onto anybody. Trying to focus down Dynamite, but Dynamite just a little too resilient, a little bit too rubbery for that player. And it's just all falling apart now for Cincinnati. The good news is that they had a good first point defense, so there's not a lot of time left for Wichita State, but they didn't have to use ultimates there. They just won through sheer firepower and focus fire. So a lot of ultimates committed by Cincinnati. They are going to go first full swap, so they're going to go for their own brawl. This is the same comp they ran back on Oasis. The May, McCree, it is standard. It is very meta, so it's, it's a good comp. I like it, but is it too late? This is a third point that I think it's it's good to swap on, but the like execution setting up. Or maybe a flank tactical visor. They are going to be kind of pushed out, so not going to happen just yet. Execution not really going to have a whole lot to coordinate with. Kellerfield has the grab, throws it out, gets two, gets taken down by O Speedy. Dynamite trying to find something, but just throws a bunch of bullets into the back of essentially nothing. Three groups back on the cart is now seen investing their coalescence to try to get this point one, but a lot of investment from a Wichita State doesn't really result in any net value. Going to the Earth Shatter coming in from Fluffy, but Deadly manages to get. A couple members knocked out, but again, the follow-up not there from Wichita. They need to start making something happen other than letting Silver Talon kill them. 
Yeah, and again, not a lot of time. We talked about this on second and on the third point. Now only a minute left. They used a lot in that fight that was lost. They didn't get nearly as much progress as you want. You do get around the first bend, so that's good. That's one less fight you got to take later because there's a lot of great natural cover there on the corner. But now with Joss State, they're swapping their full comps. So now they're going to go for a mirror. But I, I always say this. It's, it's just, it might be a little bit too late now. They're not going to have time to build up Ultimus. And now the amplification matrix is going to be coming out. Look at you. Gets it cut off by the May a wall of execution. Gonna be limiting those lines of sights just a little bit. Oh, Speedy. Still with the high noon, ready to drop it at the drop of a hat. It's gonna be trying to go into the back lines to get it, but Dynamite there with the response, able to get the flashbang and defend the hammer right in reaction time. Now, again, we need to see Wichita going in very aggressively and taking advantage of this before we see OSPD come back in. But Dynamite getting taken down is not a great start. The grab gets thrown out by Silver Talent, who tries to keep themselves alive but cannot, or cannot keep their opponent in Kill and Kill alive. Cincinnati comes possession of this card. They're looking like to be in a great spot. Overtime going to start ticking it down, and it looks like White Flapjacks is all but swing heavy. What a great play by Silvertown. I remember I was hyping them up a bit earlier on. That Graviton search, it was a one-person grab, and it gets all the value in the world. Kelgill was so high-charged. They were going for their main healer. That Baptiste and just shut it down completely, zone them out. Yuzari does not have the greatest distance in the world of her primary fire and her alternate fire. You know, it's an area of effect and it has an arc. So even though it's a bit more long range, it doesn't always hit its marker. There, they just completely canceled out anything that Kelgill was trying to get in the back line. So great job by Silver Talon. Realized they didn't have the protected barrier, so they're just like, you know what? I'm just going to hit Q. And it worked out flawlessly for Cincinnati. Their defense, however, was not flawless, but they were able to kind of regroup here on this third point after a very good first point and a very bad second point so the win condition has been set by wichita state you just got to get it to about halfway through that third point it's at a very awkward place i would say in the third point usually you don't fight there it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens if we get to that instance but wichita state they're gonna want to make sure that cincinnati doesn't even get to the third point they're gonna try to hold them here on the first one yeah, I think it's uh, safe to speak for Wichita and that they want to uh, prevent Cincinnati from getting too far ahead of themselves. But either way, rolling out, we will be seeing the Reinhardt-Zarya combination that's just so brawly. It is, and it, I I feel like Fluffy but Deadly should have been on this the entire time. Like, his Reinhardt is really good. Oh, I love what oh, they're going to be doing here. They're just going to be playing right here in the train car. They're going to run out onto the point, and they're just going to try to brawl it out. They're going to try to use all that aggression right on the cart. They don't have the Lucio. They have the Brigitte instead, which is not something I'd expect, but... Cincinnati's gonna have no idea this is coming for them. We will see a little bit of scouting might be done by the Echo. It's gonna be the flashbang coming out. Silver Talon unable to react, and just like that, the strike force hits from Wichita, immediately getting two kills, make it a third with O Speedy, and now Wichita State has the opportunity to back out and just get themselves some good positioning. Alright, nope, they're gonna go right into the back of the trinker. And they're just gonna keep playing this out. At this point, you're not even you don't care about winning fights. You just want to stall out time as long as humanly possible. You want to make sure that they don't get any movement on this cart. So far, they have not been able to, but now they're actually going to take the fight to them. Cincinnati going to drop right in. Cincinnati is going to be trying to move towards that cart, but once again, oh, Speedy going pretty even with Dynamite, but losing these crucial fights here. As we can see, Dynamite trying to just hold the train car, not exposing themselves too much, especially towards those doors of spawn, but everybody now trying to back out from the side of Cincinnati, and it's Flapjack's barely able to get away. There is an echo in the back line, so right now the question is if you're Wichita State, do you chase that kill or do you just hope that Andog doesn't come back to haunt you? They did take a little bit of damage, but there's a health pack right there. And now, you know, their attention turned and there's a Winston jumping in once again. Looking a little bit distracted from the side of Wichita State, we see the immortality field come out, but Reginald taken down. Wichita State continues to get these early kills and they're so advantageous for this team. We're seeing Wichita State being healed up quickly by Seed and despite what was some low health for the University of Cincinnati, he's not able to pull it up. And Doc just didn't even jump into the fight, was just back there the entire time, spanning away, getting their ultimate, but not being able to help their team out enough. A great way for the Foxicon to make sure that that McCree did not fall. Dynamite is still going to be oh, popping man. off, and that's a huge part to Foxicon making sure they didn't die. And I feel like Reginald's dying early on in each of these fights, but there's only so much a brick can do. Again, you don't have that upwards mobility. Now it's the Primal Rage coming out from the Winston Wet Flapjacks trying to make anything happen. Kelly Hill has the grab. Do they commit to try to lock down this duplicate and the Primal? It appears they don't, but it's actually going to be the knockoff from the Whip Shot coming in. Foxicon able to land a decent mitigation of the ult there. No res available, but shoot, let's give it to Reginald. This fight's still going on. The Shatter went off from Fluffy, but deadly, but no one has died off it. It looks like Cincinnati has flipped this. They decided to play the point. They got some movement on it. 
They still have to kill this Reinhardt, but that oh. is going to be a lot more progress than they've seen so far. But look at the time that was taken off the clock there with Stussy. That's what you want of a comp like this. It's never about winning. Like, winning fights is great, getting ultimates is great, but stalling, that's what you want to do. That's the name of the game, and as they approach Big Earls, there is very little time left for Cincinnati. But Cincinnati still looking better than their opponents in Wichita State if they're able to get this part two first without any overtime. Mm -hmm. Oh, that still remains to be seen. Kelekil has that grab, which can hold you out for a long time. See, has the amplification the field as well. Rose to grab are right onto the Winston bubble, mitigating immediately Wet Flapjacks' attempt to add a push there. Only the projected barrier onto the Reinhardt to keep them alive and swinging all the cart as the High Moon and Dynamite still going to be something that Cincinnati has to watch out for in this next fight. They do as they back up. They're probably talking about, all right, what are they going to have? What do we have? Got to use the rally right off the kick. We've got to zone out dynamite. Uh, that might have been a fat finger. I'm not sure they meant to do that, but that's a grab that are no longer going to have. I think it was just to lock down Kella Gill, and we'll see if it pays off for them. Dynamite getting the flashbang, but can't quite connect onto the brick. Does connect onto Wet Flapjacks, courtesy of a little bit of a fire strike from Fluffy, but deadly, but it looks like Cincinnati already overpowering Wichita State. Nobody left to contest, save that McCree, but too many people there to fan the hammer. Yeah, I think you are actually right. I think that was um, Zarya just being kind of caught out there. So I don't know why Kelikil was that far forward, but they get grabbed out. It's, if it is that, that's the second time that's happened, right? Silver Talon just used it on their counterpart, ends up getting the kill, and you said that it would just be good for Cincinnati to be able to cap with some time left. They do, it's only about 20 seconds, but it's still 20 seconds more than Wichita State had, but oh. this is what they're gonna do, they're just gonna run in. And are receiving her giving a cluster of grenades to Flexecution. Not able to drop that healing beacon down fast enough, but Wichita State able to turn things back. The Death Blossom tries to come out, but OSB getting dealt with rather promptly by Wichita State. And Oxycon continuing to help her team bury them both where they need to go and with healing. Yeah, a good Lucio versus just an okay Lucio. It's just amazing what a great Lucio can do. So there, Foxicon leading the charge, helping their team get in and out of fights. Gonna not have that ability online for just a second, but it looks like they're setting up on the high ground. My guess is that they're just gonna barrel on in once again. They're just gonna try to outpower everyone. It means they know that every time White Flapjack is just gonna jump out, so they don't even have to really worry about the wins, so they can just run in and ignore them. Wet Flapjack's getting a bit bold there, knowing that they have the Primal in their pocket. They're going to be throwing it in, trying to cause some displacement, and are getting a grab in hand. Locking down that McCree and Lucio onto the high ground. No immortality field to save them with this Cincinnati. Now going to be having the opportunity to continue this card for a second. Okay. Great restraint there by Foxconn not to use the sound barrier. Could have saved them, but it wouldn't have been enough to win the fight. Cincinnati, their alt economy is all right. They have a grab, a real grab. They have a uh, <laughs> rally, but that's it. And which is just say they're going to have basically everything besides a death blossom. So it's looking very, very good for them. And only a minute left, you know, use two or three ultimates to fight and wrap it up. And immediately the tanks locked down, courtesy of the grab by Kella Gill. And this is great. And getting caught out in mid air and shoe, not able to get to Carton now. A minute's going to slowly start burning down. Now we're going to see some more time banks. Great alt economy, only used two ultimates, and that's exactly what they needed. Only used the Graviton Search and the Amplification Matrix, didn't need anything more. Still have the Stamp, still have the High Noon, so so much is still there for Cincinnati, or for State Cincinnati, they don't have much. They might get High Noon, but I mean, it's just, they're all banked, they're still down. Uh, actually, they have equal amount of ultimates, but Flex Execution is pretty close to that Death Blossom see exactly how this plays out for Wichita, and it's going to be with a kill early on into Flapjacks. That's a great start. Now Wichita has the opportunity to either push onto Cincinnati, but no, instead it will be the res that comes out from Shu. The grab goes out once again. Kella Gil caught out away from their team. That might be the second opportunity where a point was let go, courtesy of that Zarya. It's going to be Ospeedy trying to get the high mute onto their opponent in Dynamite, but not quite able to. No res available from Chu this time around. And Dog, however, throwing in a couple ultimates of their own. The Earth Shatter going to be taking on the Baptiste. Primal Rage on to the Reinhardt. Now things are looking about equal. It's looking like the point will be reaching that second. And now we're going to be seeing a third round match. That duplicate was so important there. The Rhine shield just to make sure that the High Noon doesn't get anything from Dynamite. Just great work. Able just to swing for the fence as well. Really enables Wet Flapjacks to get in because they know they have a Rhine in their corner. Uh, especially Rhine that's okay if they die because it's just an ultimate and they'll still respawn in this Echo. That really, really enables the Rhine. So now they're going to go for an actual Rhine. 
for themselves. So that's really, really smart to do that as soon as possible. They only have a minute, so you can lose one, maybe even two fights, and still be able to cap this point later on. And we see immediately Wichita State responding by throwing in an amplification matrix, making it so difficult for the side of it. Cincinnati to peek out in any direction. Silver Talon getting taken down as Seed falls. So despite the Baptiste dropping, this is what Wichita State needed. They got the kills, and they're going to be able to hold for the time being unless these few remaining members have anything to say about it. Including the Mercy? Chu is wow. in a pop off. This might be it. This oh, might wow. be the full cap. This might be the matchup. Actually, it's not. It's not close enough. I was getting too excited at the beginning. They do need to contest now. This is going to be desperate. They don't oh, touch. No. They do touch. Seed barely getting in. It's going to be a very last moment touch. The Wrecking Ball getting almost pinned out by Wet Blast Jackson. This is going to be it. The Pulse Bomb or the Cluster Bomb's getting on the Flexecution. Going to be locking them down. Looks like this is about it for Wichita. They have to make some kills happen. And so far, nothing going in their favor. The Wrecking Ball duplicate comes on just to spread a few more minefields in favor of Cincinnati, but this is getting so close. Wichita State can feel the sand slipping out of their fingers. The Tracer now going to be next to touch. The grab goes out, but the Tracer has to rewind. It can't contest cart. Cincinnati takes it. True. With that, his back. Wow. It was perfectly well-timed. I, I thought that fight was over. I thought that yes. Wichita State had cleaned up, but they didn't. And I, I remember saying this as we got into Cincinnati's attacking round is that where the cart ended is such an awkward spot if you're a defender because there's nowhere to hold and it's still pretty far away from your spawn so you have to really run out. It gets a little bit farther um, then you can run out and contest it as a full team. It's a little bit closer um, then it's going to be like around the corner and then you're just going to have to play that immediately on that first fight but there where it was it was just such an awkward positioning that for which I was like, they didn't really know how to play it. And I think just like we thought the fight was over, they probably thought that they had won it as well, but they didn't. And then the Cavalry came in for Cincinnati, they put it away. But I'm glad that that series got a lot closer at the end, because Wichita State, they are a great team. Today was not the day Cincinnati, they get to prove themselves against the top five team. We got a great match. Those last two maps, I mean, Volskaya was just all over yeah. the place. But yeah. this last one on Route 66 was just a great one. Yeah, I, I would say so far one of my favorite maps of the day. Some some high intensity action and going through there on Boskaya and 66, but overall Cincinnati coming out just a little bit better than Wichita State and I think really Numbani was was the the most one sided we saw these maps, but other than that it looked it looked really great from both these sides. Yeah, I agree with you. Oasis, although it did go to Cincinnati, it was ninety nine ninety nine on most points. Wichita State put up a pretty good claim there. Numbani, as you said, it was very one-sided, I mean, full cap, full hole. That's that's like the dream right there. Cincinnati were able to find that dream map, but then things got a little bit dicey on Volskaya, and I'm wondering maybe if playing that mirror matchup was it really doomed for them from the start. Should've swapped, stayed with the brawl, they didn't. But you still get it done, you only drop one map, you don't go to map five, you win it here, and now you go to two and two on the season. Yeah, so Cincinnati gonna be feeling pretty happy about themselves, a nice uh, mantle to carry into your next fights. And unfortunately, Cincinnati, not going to be hopping into an interview with us this time around. Hopefully, we'll get them next time. However, however, folks, we are still not done. We'll have more fantastic Overwatch action heading your way after we take a short break. So make sure you stick around.
And now that I've gotten a little bit of water and a throat lozenge jack, we are back in ready for the action. We're hopping into our third game of the night, University of Colorado versus University of Tennessee. And we saw Cincinnati come in with a three-game record. Now we're going to be seeing Tennessee come in with a three-game record. Yeah, we mentioned them a bit earlier, one of those new teams that joined the division. And Tennessee and Cincinnati, they've had very similar opponents where they've had uh, I think some really good ones mixing with some of the ones that are a little bit lower in the table. But I think Tennessee, they came in and made a statement when they beat University of Texas Arlington in their debut match. That was a six-map series. It went the full gauntlet. And one kind of thing I was joking about, but also was statistically correct, is that they were only winning control maps. I know now that is not the case. They have one other map types besides control going into this. And last week, they were able to win very nice, clean 3-0 over Siena. But Colorado, they have been on an upswing. It reminds me a lot of Wichita State. Um, where they, you know, they had an okay fall split and then they looked really strong coming out into the spring. Um, like the last few weeks of the fall is where they really started to get together. Colorado, well, I, we cast them last week against Tanisha, and that was just a bloodbath. That was a very <laughs> one sided affair. They were spawn camping on Hanamura, they were having fun of it. They were running Doomfist into Farah, and the Doomfist was working. But today, it's not going to be an easy opponent. I think Tennessee, just like Cincinnati, you know, they haven't had a lot of experience here, they haven't had a lot of, had a lot of games, but they are definitely, you know, at the top, I would say they are they are one of the best teams here right now. Not a flawless record, but one they're not going to be too bothered by as we do look towards Oasis for our starting map. No big surprise there if you've been watching for the last two games. And now, as we look at these compositions, it looks like uh, Tennessee going to be going for some a little divey. Yep, they are going to be going for something a bit divey. Both teams are going to be going for something a bit divey. The biggest differences are uh, the off tank, but the deep, yes. That, that's a very interesting one for me on the side of Tennessee. They're just going to use the Symmetra turret to get in teleporter, not the turret. And they're going to go into a Tracer uh, Sombra, so a lot of flank damage, a lot of in and out kind of poke. But they need to find picks right away because there's the self-sustain on the other side is going to be good. And Alyssa just getting a big anti-nade. Aravir not going to be able to get healed up by anything, and then Cloud taking the wraparound with the flash bang, the fan to hammer to quickly follow up, and Colorado already looking very good. Alex taking it down that quickness doesn't matter when you have an arrow through your gut. It does. Again, going for these aggressive flanks, we see this every week, week in and week out. They do it. They have, he has no fear. Like he just he would go for those big plays. There they trade, but it works out in their favor. They are able to get the point cloudly back in the middle of no time and daddy d just gonna be taking the side game of the hanzo those arrows they are like logs they find head hit markers like it's nobody's business they certainly do and we see basher immediately trying to get on to the area of pagoda trying to just get a little bit of sight or a little bit of point contest as possible but there is always somebody from colorado just continually contesting making things difficult and we on the low ground as now the entirety of the university of colorado looks to regroup cloud be looking to wrap around towards that highway they need to be careful they might run into a member of tennessee but no yeah and i mean a mccurry is a glass cannon right so if you go for the full command it can work out but daddy d's gonna keep clicking heads alex is down and even though there's a sombra on the flank there isn't much really they can do they're gonna have to regroup and wait again and I've noticed is that it just seems like there's one or two kills that Colorado gets and Tennessee completely disengages and that's smart, but you're just, you're, you're losing time already. Halfway uh, is Colorado to completing this point. An optimistic flashbang goes out from Cloud, not quite able to connect onto the Sombra. Daddy D taking an anti nade but able to back off enough to get healed. Look, without a listen, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Cloud tries to catch the Tracer, does receive a projected barrier from the Zarya, but Basher chasing them down. Is gonna be getting their target there, their query if you prefer. And now Bash are gonna be looking to change targets. Daddy D eventually does stick that giant Winston, and this is all point progress for Colorado, most importantly. Yeah, they have not lost it at all. Now they're super, super close to winning this round. They know exactly where the Somber is. They're gonna oh. catch out the Somber. Somber had EMP. So that's something they're not gonna have. They're gonna have to go into the spike 5v6. Maybe if they're able to survive long enough. They can hold out, but I mean, they're gonna have to commit their somber. They're gonna have to commit like every alt besides the EMP, I think, really to have any chance of winning this. So it's not gonna be great for Tennessee's alt thing. And Colorado needs to be smart here. They can't invest that sound barrier until that EMP comes out. Otherwise, they'd all get stripped. We'll see how Senes reacts here. It's gonna be the sound barrier from Paravir. And now there it is. You see the sound barrier come out in response. Bird Boys playing excellent there. Basher trying to just dislocate this on a thrower off the cliff, but throws themselves off the cliff as well. Oh, it's such a big mistake. And I'm Listen, finally does go down courtesy of Aramir here, but it's going to be Tennessee going back and forth on this. They do come out with a couple more kills in their pockets and the point to progress. 
And I've got to wonder if the Nano McCree was worth it. I don't think it was. Save it for one of your tanks. Save it for a rainy day. It's an ultimate you're not going to have. You will still have. The Graviton Surge works out really well because you know that the sound barrier was just committed. Speaking of sound barriers, I think you brought up a great point that Bird Boys, you know, was hiding, was waiting for that EP to come yeah. out. Did, but still just could not save their team of it despite great plays from them. That's just how it be when you're a support player. You can hit your ultimate and still people die. Sad, but true as the song does go. Now we see Colorado looking to get towards point, getting toes near it. Hack on the Ruby goes out after the projected barrier had already been sent onto the Winston. So Ruby's still going to be getting some of that ult charge. And a lot of opportunity here as the grab manages to lock down the three. Zena does take down the McCree, but it doesn't seem to matter as Colorado already barreling ahead and getting these kills to their name. Ruby timed that so well. She just waited in waited for that DM to go down, and it did, and then she threw the grab immediately as it went down. There's still this possible contest from the Sombra, but it looks like she might be a bit preoccupied. Tries to throw in the translocator, but Seneth not able to touch in time, and there was a bit of a comeback there from Tennessee, but Colorado do take away that first point. Yeah, Tennessee not showing themselves to be complete pushovers quite yet. Colorado definitely having to work for their win right there. Yeah, they, they had to work for it. I think they were, I think honestly also Colorado could have probably wrapped it up a lot cleaner than that. I yep. think they went had some misplays again. I, I think the Nano McCree is a big one. Um, but we'll see what they try to run this time. They're going to be running the uh, May Reaper, which I do like, but they're swapping who's playing projectile and who's playing hit scan. So that's a very interesting thing to consider. Maybe Cloud is just a better May and that's the way they want to run it, but it's a good comp regardless, especially after those Reaper buffs. He was kind of taken out of this composition for McCree, who has had a lot of buffs as of late, but now with the projectile damage being increased a little bit for Reaper, it looks like some teams are going to be ready to roll with him once again. As well, May, a very game sense heavy character. So may just be that, oh, the boop getting very close to knocking Alex off. Dangerous there, Bird Boys eventually getting the kill on the young man with the boop, but not off the cliff, just instead with the damage done directly. And now, playing very carefully, but uh, it's, uh, it's Bird Boys right now, just knowing where they stand and managing to get these kills. At least they would have, but nobody got actually killed by the boop. Yeah, that that's... If I was Bird Boys, I'd be like, Blizzard, please explain, because I believe that was a double boop. They might have had one that survived. It looks like May was the only one that died from the fall damage. It also could have been just the... Pair of yours I think it might have been the boop into the Rhinehammer. Oh! The Rhinehammer does kind of displace you a little bit, so unlucky. But you saw Bird Boys. They were pretty happy with themselves. They did a little celebratory dance on the grounds, and again, first point cap going their way. A nice celebratory. Jig Cloud using the May wall to bring themselves up and over. And it was the right hand basher getting frozen down, but Funkbaster not quick enough to respond, and because of that, their shatter gets blocked. Now Colorado University trying to strike back and finding some success as the amplification matrix has come out, but a little bit stronger for Colorado. Yeah, just I mean the support play so far from Colorado has been really immaculate. Yes. Illicit, perfectly timed ant matrix, uses it before Young Man is able to get it off. And I mean a Reaper through an ant matrix at close range, that is deadly there. Daddy just firing away, but it's really Ruby was able to hit those projectile shots for alternate fire. It, that does get extra damage. Her primary fire does not. We'll see exactly how University of Tennessee are going to be trying to play this. The Blizzard does go out from the side of Colorado. They're looking to seal this up. It's that immortality field from Young Man trying to keep them alive. Young Man has well taken quite a wailing, and now with the front line gone, University of Tennessee has to try to retreat. Does manage to take one out on the way, but Alex is still going to be set to the grave. And they're still chasing this Zarya all the way to spawn. You gotta be careful now. You don't want to go into the now. This is the time to back out. Well played because your May is still on their way back from spawn themselves. So you don't want to take that fight when you are down. He's down to Daddy D right now. I mean, they got the Death Blossom online. This is last fight territory. It could be all they need to clean up this from the map. Tennessee needs to make something happen here. But with the grab going out, it's questionable. Will anybody be able to touch Bird's Poison? Gonna be throwing out the sound barrier, mitigate a lot of that damage. Daddy D stunned out with the immortality field. And now it's Colorado who managed to maintain this presence on point. Illicit gonna be getting frozen down, but nobody's there to follow up. Everybody's sectioned away from the point. Funkmaster getting walled off by their own the team. A bit of a frustrating moment there, but one that still looks like it's gonna help Colorado come out a little bit victorious in this fight and the map. Yeah, it's it's almost a big misplay, but you're up so much. I think the the play there from Cloud is like I'm just not gonna let them touch the point. I'm gonna cut off this choke point. They're gonna have to walk all the way around so they can't touch. They do touch for just a moment, but they're just up so many people there that it doesn't matter. It's a very very clean second round for Colorado. They're able to take that 99 to zero, and 
Let us see, they're gonna have to be going back to the drawing board a little bit. We saw them fight on that first point pretty well. They're able to bring it back to about 50%, but this time around, I mean, this was a fight they could have won. Um, they just, you know, they just couldn't dodge the shots, and we saw there were still a lot of members alive for Colorado, and all that damage coming out from the Baptiste, the Reaper, and the Zarya through the Matrix. It's very scary. Yeah, I mean, certainly you don't have to double your damage to be a threat, but it certainly helps as now we look ahead. Colorado going to be having a win in their pocket, carrying it on to our next map, which is going to be Numbani. Excited to see how these teams play, considering we've uh, we have been hyping up Numbani quite a bit here today, Jack. Yeah, it's unfortunate that we've really only seen all of Numbani once yeah. on uh, Cincinnati's attack. They had a great attack in the last game. Let's see if either of these teams can replicate it. I feel like teams never get stopped second point. It's almost either you get full health or you get stopped on third or you full cap. Like second point just seems to be automatically given to the attackers most of the time just because it's kind of awkward as a defender to hold it. There's a lot of high ground, but unlike places on Route 66, none of it really lets you contest the cart from hiding up there. So it's going to be interesting to see if we do see a second point stop. And I'm sure just because I said it now, I'm going to cast a curse <laughs> into existence and somehow, some way, one of these teams will get held near the very end of it. But you know, we're not there quite yet. I, I think the biggest thing for Tennessee is um, they have not been able to execute as much with these uh, more funky comps. With you know, they tried the Sombra, mm -hmm. and I like you know trying something creative, trying to do something new. And Sombra really isn't meta. There, I mean, it, this, the EMP was not enough on that first point. Second point. They do go actually for a very meta comp, but the Reaper, I feel like, was the better choice. We saw the Reaper from Daddy D get a lot of value, not even necessarily from just kills, but just, you know, the the, the threat that it was. You said it like yourself. Uh, you don't need double damage to be a threat, and Reaper <laughs> is so good at one-shotting squishy characters. So when you see that Reaper approaching around the corner, you just feel the fear, like, shiver up your spine. Which, you know, of all the characters to have that effect, I think Reaper is perhaps the most appropriate, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah, I, I mean, like, the, the, the skull mask, like, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I see that, like, in a dark alley at night, I scream, <laughs> I run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I tend to agree. Not uh, the way you, not the not the person, the individual, the hero you want to get caught in an alleyway with, I'd say, uh, by any intense. However, as we look towards Nobody, I, I, I'm a little bit doubtful we see them, particularly on that first point, the Reaper, that is, especially considering how valuable that high ground can be for these teams. I absolutely agree with you. I mean, Reaper, you can contest high ground, but like, there's gonna be so much long range damage that using your shadow step could uh, be actually deadly. You could end up falling, especially if you don't have your Wraith form online. We do know there's gonna be a side swap, so Tennessee is gonna be on the attack this time around. Uh, that is their choice as the losers from the last map. They get to choose which side they want, so that's kind of like loser's advantage coming into this one. And I think we could see it third point because, again, just like Route 66, mm -hmm. uh, Nambani, you want to go to a Brawl Comp, it's just the best choice because there isn't a lot of high grants. It doesn't really make sense to stay on a more divey kind of composition, but we'll see what happens if we get there, if we do see the Reaper come out. Colorado, they're going to be going for a dive, but it's it's interesting. Okay, this works because they're on defense. I was going to say that their DPS are much more stationary. The right. Torbjorn is a great anti-dive DPS, though, the turret. And if you can hit your shots, I mean, they can be very deadly in the McCree. Obviously, you know how good Cloud is on it by now. Tend to agree here. Also worth noting, the hubs are going to be coming in for the side of Tennessee. It's going to be coming in for Senath. So let's see exactly what they're intending to play here. And I know they're just kind of rotating through their heroes. Once again, going for Echoes. This is a very standard dive comp, double bubble comp. This is a run in with the Winston. Use the Zarya projected bubble on them, try to absorb some damage, and then got the hubs just fly over the top, trying to get an insta kill from it. We'll see if they're able to find that kind of coordination, find that kind of aggression. I mean, if you're going for anyone, Go for Cloud. They're kind of on an island on their own right now. If they're positioning, they do back up. So, good game awareness by them. But if they've been jumped, that could have been an easy first elimination. A tough spot to be if you're Cloud. You want to get that value, but you don't want to feed yourself over. But no, seeing that break, just keep eyes on that hallway. Alex, they're going to be seen coming from a mile away. Now, looking to dive onto the Torbjorn, who slowly has to turn their back. But Alex, looks like they jumped off the high ground, or dropped off the high ground, rather. And so far, Colorado not taking too many kills, with the exception of the hubs, but still buying a lot of time. Yeah, that's just a big misplay there, unfortunately, for Alex. He almost found the two tap, uh, the reload tap after on Daddy D, but they just kind of slipped off the oh. point. And now Alex does get counted eventually by a Brigitte. I remember when she first came in, she was basically Tracer's best counter. They do resurrect it, so they're gonna be able to get back into the Spider play, but Dahab's already taking so much damage. I mean, Cloud must be so close. Yep, already at 84% to getting another high noon. 
And we see that Winston go in onto the high ground towards that McCree, but Cloud playing this angle very well, knowing that if anybody pushes that corner, they take damage from the turret, and that Mercy now flying in, get caught out, Ruby! sees this and she absolutely capitalizes on it, takes the Mercy down, no res available, now the Winston's very low, Basher does go and retrieve, retreat to get a health kit, but the damage is already been done. And Elicit again kills Alex, this is a great anti-dive composition, the Burkita, the Torbjorn, the McCree, so much CC, so much ways to catch someone out, Colorado, they are playing this pretty flawlessly for the time being, still about half the time left for Tennessee, now they're going to be going to a brawl, and I've said this before, you know, just run to the point, force that dive composition to come on to you, make them drop all the way to the oh. high ground, and kill Cloud. That's a great way to start things off, too. Yeah, Cloud apparently not keeping track of which heroes just got swapped out. Alex going to be getting a nice headshot onto the McCree. That will one and done that player, and no res available as well for Colorado. It's going to be the Antonade on the young man. The young man not able to throw in that nano boost, and with the University of Colorado having one in pocket, that certainly looks like they might have a little bit better of a time defending. That fun master just her positioning gets in at the exact right time they might lose someone along the way but they're back into the fight in no time the good thing though for tennessee is they do have a lot of ultimates they do use the valkyrie but everything else besides that and the earth shadow will be online they're actually going to be swapping now to the lucio this is really smart now they'll have speed to engage Colorado, they also have so much still they're gonna have everything besides the nano that was the only thing they committed there in a fight where that we were down initially a person they're just gonna keep letting funk master like get all charged with this damage Oh, and that Torbjorn Molten Core coming out, I like to call it the Nacho Cheese Daddy D. Absolutely gonna be dipping Basher in it, and with this now, looks like Tennessee are waiting to take another retreat as Colorado continue to get aggressive. So I gotta ask you, um, do you like the combination of the Molten Core and the High Noon at the same time? Because I'm personally not sure how I feel about it. It depends on where the Molten Core is placed. If you have to run away through it, then yes, but that's difficult to coordinate. Yeah, and it looked like they were trying to do that there. Uh, but it was the Molten Core that was really what got uh, Tennessee down in that fight, and they just decided to give up. They realized they lost like one or two people along the way. They're like, this is not worth contesting. We're just going to save our ultimates. They still have four in their bank after Colorado used two, and now they only have three. And that's going to be the first kill. Basher receiving the nano boost as the fire strike goes out. Daddy D taken down with their turret. No trace of the Torbjorn left on the field. And Primal Raging Winston is going to be going in heavy. Funkmaster just trying to cause some sort of separation to Hubs. It's an anti nade but not taken down too, too low. However, has to try to play these angles. It's going to be the Wisdom making the jump. Funkmaster able to get the kill. The question is, will it be enough? Cloud takes a body shot, has to drop down off that high ground from Alex. And is still Colorado holding very firm, at least trying to. But the flashbang onto the Reinhardt makes him reel just a little bit. The Riga test will come through. They need to keep Basher alive. There is only a loose here right now, so it's very low healing. There are so many characters coming back right now. Listen, goes to the Zenyatta, just trying to get a little bit more damage, and that Discord is going to shred through them. Oh. And there's going to be the Nano McCree once again, and I think this time around, it's a very good choice. It will be a good choice if they can manage to hold this first point. Otherwise, it might be a little costly, and Cloud throwing in the double headshot lands onto Alex, and with that, a definite good choice. Over time, going to tick down Tennessee, not getting the full completion. That was four kills in that fight for Cloud. Um, I mean, Cloud's the one hitting the headshots at the end of the day, right? But that was some great support play once again. The Nano coming out the exact right time, the Discord being on the exact right target. So everything is aligned there. The stars aligned in the sky there for Colorado to full hold that point. They did give up about 81%. So there is a world where Tennessee can still win this if they have a really, really good defense. It's not 33%. It's got to be a little bit more than that. Almost a full point cap for Colorado to walk away with this one as well as the second map in this series. So in Tennessee, like, I, I've seen it done before. I remember actually it was, I believe, in their first series, um, it was actually going against them. I remember, like, they just had to take, like, about, I think, the first point and a little bit of the second point to win the map, and UTA was able to hold them. So, no, reverse scenario. Maybe this time around they can be the ones holding and be able to win this map and even up the score. Well, they'll certainly have to be working for it. Hub's going to be going on to the Torbjorn, perhaps trying to get a little bit more anti-dive themselves. Let's see how that works out. And I, I had to wonder, like, do you do you stick with the Brawl right now? If you're Colorado, do you try to run it yourself, or do you go to the dive? We don't ask what's going to choose, but they're going for double snipers and they have Lucio on us, so my guess is running around in any moves see there actually no they're gonna stick with double bubble so this is interesting the loose i'm not sure how it really fits into this comp just with your deep it's really just to escort your zarya in and out of places but i mean there are some 
really good hit scan players in this league. Cloud is one of them. Daddy D, definitely a great hand Hanzo player as well. So if they find the right angle, they find what they need, they could get be able to take heads. Yeah, and now as we see Cloud continuing to try to get these shots, trying to stay down in lane, a very powerful position for this Widowmaker, but already the team of Tennessee is just capitalizing on the two kills. You have those DPS, they're not as strong, they can't really capitalize a lot of damage with long-range sniping. You try to have the Hanzo in there to, to hold it down with, the, with a little bit shorter range, but there's only so much you can do. Now, however, we do see Colorado rethinking their strategy. Cloud will be switching off the Widowmaker. I do like that. You go for the Widowmaker once, try to catch somebody out of position, but your opponent can only adapt more and more as they go through these fights. We see Daddy D trying to throw out a little bit of scouting, a little bit of damage as well if they're able to land anything, but so far, doesn't seem to be the case. Basher going to be going in with their team, trying to collapse on their opponents, and Fungmaster actually going to be the first one to drop University of Colorado in a very tough spot. Bird Boys trying to stay on point, put a little bit of pressure, but eventually caught out, and Basher only has to hold the Tesla Cannon on them for a few seconds. Now the University of Colorado is going to be back backing out for the regroup. Yeah, they again like this is what happens, right? Uh, there's still a good amount of time on the clock, but you need so little that sometimes you just take it. You don't like realize that there's not much time left, so you kind of get overconfident. They are going to stop that ad to the reaper. I do like this. It looks like they're just going to try to play on the point. They're going to try to force Tennessee to draw. I'll say exactly what can happen here if Colorado is able to get themselves nestled nice and clean. It looks oh, like Tennessee not quite responsive just yet, but they will be reacting as soon as they are aware it's going to be the amplification field, which admittedly Tennessee not able to take full advantage of. They're going to be rotating away from it rather quickly with the exception of the Baptiste. And Colorado doing a great job of keeping themselves safe despite this perhaps exposed rotation that might normally come through. Daddy D, however, a bit too aggressive, walks into the waiting arms of Alex. And now it's going to be the rotation through the rest of the University of Tennessee who are trying to make their own way. Swinging heavy is Funkmaster and pushes the McCree out of the immortality field, able to get the kill off because of it. Now the hub's going to be throwing in the molten core and until University of Tennessee has not given up any progress. They have not. They do use a few ultimates to pull it down, but I think that's a good trade at the end of the day. You get out the Nano and you get out the High Noon as well. Bird Boys, you have to make sure that you're squirting your Reinhardt into enemies. It looks like a big mistake there from Alex. They actually left the safety in the Immortality Hills. They tried to run away, but it's the only kill that was really found from the Nano. Reinhardt swinging their hammer. Tennessee, they're still going to have the Primal Rage. They still have great stall, if need be, from Basher. And this looks really, really good for Tennessee. It certainly does. They're not quite out yet. Basher gets thrown off. However, uses the Primal Rage to hop themselves right back up and then back out. In and out very quickly, but Colorado already getting two kills. Well, the kill and the D-Mech onto the debuff. Basher now going to be using that Primal Rage by their team. A little bit of time, and time is exactly what the DPS needed. Dahub and Alex both going to be getting kills, and might just work out in their favor. It's going to be the turret taken down. The Fan the Hammer over the shield, or rather the Flashbang over the shield into the Fan the Hammer. Accidentally played there. Ruby going to be the last member to drop. And that's why you gotta make sure that you don't leave a pilot diva alive. She can still do damage. I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, we can clean her up later. No, you gotta finish her off as soon as possible. That pistol still does a heck of a lot of damage. They get back into mech. It's like they have a second life. Their lucky dog just stays alive, gets two kills, doesn't even get back into mech even though they had it back online. Alex has the high I mean, they almost have the most important. They almost have the health. He's in a great place. And uh, it's very easy that you force the sound barrier so early. It still doesn't seem Bird Boys does throw in the sound barrier, but it's at the cost of their own life. University of Tennessee still coming in with quite a few kills. Cloud able to get one, but there's only so much that one kill can do. The d -Mech as well. Daddy D learning their lesson, taking down the baby diva, but can't quite find it. The overtime clock is going to take down University of Tennessee. Makes this a even series. And what did I say? I, I feel like I kind of jinxed Colorado there. I was oh, like, <laughs> in a situation that's been similar to Tennessee, and as Tennessee is able to get a little bit of indirect revenge, they're able to hold out. It's all they need was 8-10 of that first point, and they just had one of the best defenses I've seen on them, Bonnie, in a long time. Played this comp flawlessly, and now we're going to see the spoils Ooh. of the hubs on that Torbjorn looking mighty fine with the headshot at the very end, and the turret is doing its job. Yeah, and I reacted the same way I did just now when I saw that wicked uh, rivet gun flick shot onto the Lucio, just Ooh, that looks like it hurt. You see the impact, you see that it's a headshot, and Lucio just crumples to the ground. A grim sight, but a happy one for Tennessee, because it means they're going to be walking away with the point. 
Yep, it's all tied up. And we're gonna be taking a quick break because as you see, I'm having some connection issues, unfortunately, right now. So be sure to grab some water, maybe stretch out a little bit, but don't go anywhere because we'll be back with that third and definitely not final map in just a few minutes. And we're back, Jag, hopefully still on the mend, trying to get things resolved here, but we're going to be hopping right into Volskaya Industries, ready to get going, and I hope you brought your jacket. 
Yeah, it's cold out here, and uh, it's even worse when your production software decides not to work. Oh. So right now I am green screenless, and it seems to be using my webcam camera, but we take those. Either <laughs> way, we still have audio. We still have each other, so we're all and that's honestly the most important oh. thing in the world. But beyond that, we also still have some Overwatch. These teams are tied with one, so we're promised to see the T6 once again, which I find really exciting. It looks like both these teams are going to try to brawl it out here. Well, certainly a method that I think you and I are both fans of. Love seeing that brawl. Love seeing the, the slugfest go down. As we see Daddy D on that tour going right to throw out that turret. Might be anticipating a little bit more of a divey action here, but not going to be the case. As now Colorado initially doing some damage with Cloud on that high ground. And the Reaper actually going to be separated from their team just a little bit. The Hubs takes a few shots from the Revolver. Not enough to bring them into any sort of critical level, but it's going to be University of Tennessee rotating themselves onto the high ground and now looking for the opening. They just threaten that high ground over Colorado, who now just has to shoot upwards. An unenviable spot for them as now Tennessee rotates around. Young Man taking a lot of damage, has to play very carefully, not expose themselves to any damage. Alex at 50 HP and slowly taking themselves back up, courtesy of the Baptiste and Paravir on of that Lucio as well. Colorado, again, just allowing Tennessee to take their time, knowing it's burning time off the clock. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with taking your time. If you're breaking turrets, if you're able to get the angle you want, like you're able to get the full rotation that works out, now they're going to charge in. And we see the Mortality Field go out. Stun comes out, and a nice Earth Shatter coming in early from Funkmaster, early considering this is the first fight, but going on a little bit of time. The Vakri tries to go into the flashbang, but the projector barrier is there. And the problem with that is, I mean, it gets dangerous because it takes a long time to rotate and you finally are able to get into place, but then you still lose the fight. They try to chase Cloud out, Cloud gets a kill, breaks the Mortality Field, and then from there, the Shatter, like you said, from Funkmaster, it was just chef's kiss. That's what it was very early on, but they were able to sue. Swing so much, they were able to get so many fire strikes attempted, they got that ultimate quickly. But oh, look, no. there are people coming back on the side of Colorado and they're getting cut off. Yeah, Bird Boys went to Fairy Cloud back onto point, but they have to take that high ground. They can't quite contest University of Tennessee unless they get focused down with that Lucio themselves. Now we see Colorado trying to wrap around. The boot coming in doesn't get anybody. It gets two! And with that, Bird Boys again back at the usual shenanigans. Bird Boys can fly, but nobody else can. Yep, and finally, Bird Boys does get that big boot kill after being denied on Oasis by uh, the Heart Hammer there, just great positioning, realizes, hey, you know, that, that's, just, that's just a long drop, so I'm gonna send them straight there. They're able to get almost their uh, sound barrier from it, so a lot of ultimates online for Colorado. I have to agree here as Tennessee once again gonna take another crack at it. Alex, having that high noon and pair of here, having that sound barrier to keep themselves alive and maybe zone out the point as well with the high noon if they opt into it. We see Tennessee now looking to wrap around directly onto point. Alex gonna be leaning in, but everybody gets locked out by the grab. It's the flashbang onto the high ground. Excellent intuition there from Alex. Golden Core comes up from Daddy D to try to get the point secured and it succeeds. Yep, and no hammer kill, but Daddy D just ended up bringing it out in the end anyway, trying to you know, think of the glory days about the possibility <laughs> of getting it done. Tennessee, they don't have a lot of time, but they do have a lot of ultimates. It's everything except they're death blossom, so there's definitely a lot of chances for that. When this, it's all about the order. I think you got to try to use the graviton search earlier to get out the, the ground barrier from Bird Boys, get them to use that ultimate in a way that's not really. Cool. Look at that! Oh, huge flashbang! A nice flashbang coming in from Cloud tries to go for a dead eye of their own, can't quite find it. Elicit. It looks like they might be considering throwing in that amplification matrix. They do indeed. Bird Boys throws in the sound barrier, but it's only for three members, all of whom are getting picked apart get picked apart and there is going to be the cap. It's not a lot of time left on the clock, but they will get some more time going into this point. An extra three minutes to spare. And they do actually now have the Death Blossoms, the one thing they didn't have going into it, they have now. And there's nothing for Colorado. There are no ultimates. There is nothing that can stop this. Now that they've swapped off the McCree, there's nothing that can stun it. I don't even think getting trapped it actually stop the Death Blossom. We just hold them into place. Reaper not as fast moving as he used to be with that Death Blossom, so it might not even be the most impactful option there. The hubs gotta be looking, waiting, buying their time, and finding their opening a good tactic there. As the McCree drops down, they know that that's the opportunity for Colorado to redirect a lot of attention. Alex actually knocking everybody down with that Deadeye. The Death Blossom soon to follow. Make it two kills each, three kills in the case of the hubs. And with it now, like right tried that. going for the boop there, and it actually, I think, led to not only their death, but also Ruby's death, because right into that Zarya sightline, but there's still going to be a here for Colorado. 
It's gonna be Funky Master jumping on the point, and now the Molten Core tries to come in, making it saving graces, but there's not enough that Torbjorn can do. The Immortality Field as well, keeping everybody up. Wrecking Ball, the last hope for this team, but that hope is dying. I see they have come alive in this series. I mean, it looked very touch and go on that first chance they take the hell held, but instead they're able to get it with 30 seconds spare. They just pull the way down to the second point. Their alt bank is nice enough. The high noon, that was the biggest play. Alex getting two kills. It, it was just getting that much. But other than that, like, wow. I mean, the death blossom wasn't really sealed the deal. I have to agree. Both those ultimates getting some good impact. And man, if you're Colorado, that's a little bit heartbreaking. You get that almost full hold on first, but the ultimates are just overwhelming from Tennessee. You have to compensate with your own, and then it just doesn't work out. See what happens here. It looks like Tennessee wants to rock the double shield. This is a comp that we don't see very often days, but it is a good one here. I remember I was talking about this in the Sienna matchup. I was like, you yeah, know, they should run your Sigma instead with the Bastion, but it looks like that is not going to happen. That was just a bait. They are going to be running the double, uh, not the double, not, nothing's double about this. It's just going to be the run, run the standard comp. They are going to be running on attack instead of a May. It looks like neither of these teams have really favored me. That's something that I've noticed. We saw it a bit on control, but mm -hmm. we have not really seen it since. I tend to agree, um, but I mean, you know, again, we mentioned it on um, that control map. May sometimes a game sense hero where these teams might just not be feeling that. They might just be looking for a little bit more of the direct uh, mechanical skill coming through, and mechanics might be what we see here as University of Colorado now going to be barreling out of the gates towards the Visible Sky at Choke. See them initially try to go behind that truck. A fire strike from on high, or towards high from Funk Master. Gonna be getting a little bit of damage, and immediately that Torbjorn in a very weak, vulnerable position gets caught out, but doesn't get taken down. And looks like Colorado going for a rather quick engagement as compared to their opponents in Tennessee. See if they get the rotation, it looks like Colorado, they are just heading for the hills, they are running for their lives, but there's an off the map. That you know, without getting up, that kills a little bit more all charts going the way right now. Of Tennessee and so get first hold kills a minute off the clock. No, it's just yet, but still more, more doing their way. I think the biggest thing is they really have to get to hubs as much as they can. These molten cores have to take on both sides and completely cut off the choke point. Tennessee now has their task cut out for them. We're going to be seeing if they can continue to hold here. They have a lot of their members staying on this high ground, trying to be an ever-present threat towards that point. Colorado can't quite just dive on the point. There's too many angles of attack to worry about. Buddy D eventually able to take down that turret and will provide a little bit of relief. But Tennessee lose their main tank, and now the amplification field is going to be providing a huge benefit of damage and healing. And with that, Colorado looks like they're going to be able to succeed in taking this point. And looks like it indeed, Daddy D able to get the final shots, able to get the two final blows, and a lot more time on the clock right now, so Colorado could end up finishing a nice time bank going into extra rounds, but still gotta get that second point one way or another. They do have the Shatter. Tennessee, they have DPS ultimates, they almost have Shatter themselves, so Tennessee is not gonna be going into this fight empty-handed. Certainly will not. They're trying to set up that turret. A little bit of a miss there from the hubs, it seems, unless they just want to keep it on the low ground. But no, they will be repositioning it. Elevator going to be taken for Colorado as now they look to get right on the point with that Earth Shadow. They're going to be looking for their opening, trying to force out that Rhine. But a bit too aggressive from Funk Master, trying to push past the Rhine Shield, ends up costing them their life. Now, Tennessee don't need to invest any more ults other than the High Noon and the Amplification Field. They pretty much got this. They do indeed. They wrap it up. They still get to keep a lot of their ultimates. In fact, they're going to have everything besides what they just use the end matrix in the high noon. So, it's a lot for them to hold. It's just they can't overcommit. I think generally the sweet spot is two ults for a fight. You can hold on to a little bit more than that, and everything is nice and good. But if you overcommit, if you have to try to throw out some more stuff at the very end just to try to win a fight, that's where it goes to the opposite end, and then CU has the advantage. As we can see, Colorado continuing to try to find their advantage here, but it's going to be difficult as they do have to contest with a lot of those ultimates you mentioned from Tennessee, but they're just going to take out the Baptiste, the Immortality Field, no longer a factor, but the grab into the Molten Core, that's ugly, just as ugly as Cloud's High Moon, a lot of ultimates flying here, but it looks like Colorado making it work for them, Tennessee, going to have time to get some response in. Yeah, there might be a bit of a time for a recontest, but will be enough to stop the full hit. They do get a tree around, they do get a sound barrier out, that actually could be enough to self-sustain them. But the Death Blossom from Daddy D is just going to be too big. 
and the pin onto the wrecking ball are gonna be sealing them away for this fight. Alex actually coming in, taking down Daddy D, so things not quite over for the side of Tennessee. The grab coming out from Ruby, she's really looking to lock this down and win this fight for their team. One member on point still, the Moira trying to play around, and the Tracer trying to dance around, but neither one gonna be having success for too long. Enough time though for the wrecking ball to get back in, this is a tag match. Like no other, but with that, the Wrecking Ball getting thrown off point, Basher unable to contest. And uh, that's a lot less time than I expected Colorado to have. A lot less time indeed. In 2 minutes 59 seconds, they were going at a pretty good pace, still a minute over their opponents in Tennessee as Jack is attempting to get his microphone fixed. We will be having that resolved shortly. However, now we're going to be seeing Tennessee once again go on the attack. And did like the way they were performing. They did come out with some points on their end of the board, but with not as big a time bank. And of course, that's going to be a big concern here. As we look towards the defense, however, we'll get to get a little bit of a sneak peek towards what they're going to be running for their lineup, Funkmaster and Ruby on the Ryan Zarya. No surprise, Ruby been playing the Zarya fairly well as well. Funkmaster really getting aggressive with that Reinhardt. You love to see it. Daddy D and Cloud not looking to change either. And with this, it's going to be looking like a little bit of a standard composition here. As now the attacking team so far, Alex and DeHubs looking to keep it consistent as well. This tells me that maybe it's going to be a mental switch coming in from Tennessee, looking to reevaluate their strategy. As we are getting closer and closer towards these gates dropping. Five seconds to go, and now Tennessee looking to psych themselves up and get out the door in a quick fashion, which they do. Looks like Paravir might be switching over from the Lucio, not with their team quite yet. Nope, just dragging a little bit behind. No big problem there. As now, we see the immediate damage start to come in onto Tennessee. Colorado immediately having Ruby land a couple of those big right clicks. Not fully charged as Azaria might get the most benefit for, but still, a little bit of damage, a little bit of ult charge. Okay, University of Tennessee now going to be pushing in, trying to get the damage with that Reaper, but the hubs has to play a little bit farther back, which means that that damage gets minimized. The Baptiste taken down, the McCree taken down. It's a great opportunity for Colorado to continue their push towards the attacking Tennessee as Lucio's the only one able to get away. As we look ahead, Funkmaster able to build up quite a bit of ult charge just through those heavy swings and looks like not much to be compared with on the side of Tennessee. Young man, maybe building up a little bit towards that immortality field, but nowhere near the other side of the board. Ruby spiking some early charge as well. Not going to be leaning too much on that grab in this coming fight. We do see now University of Tennessee getting very aggressive. A nice flashbang comes through, but it's not enough. Alex not quite able to stop the Earth Shatter's Funkmaster. Wings heavy. I am back. Hopefully, nothing bad happens from here on out. Thank you for solo casting, Sir Wealth. And you, what a pleasure to work with always. Tennessee, I mean, this is they're, they're on their last legs right now. They're trying to go for anything on this extra round, but it, it's not looking great. Only 30 seconds left. No real ultimates. Lucky Dog is the closest, followed by that Baptiste, but Amplification Matrix usually isn't going to be the bread and butter they need, especially when Elicit has it themselves. We're going to be seeing the dueling amplification matrix is coming out. But no, Elicit deciding to wait just a little bit. The bat amplification matrix that comes out a little bit later might find a little bit more benefit. But Dahub's just going to tuck right into Daddy D, take down that Torgord. A great moment there. Cloud taking down three with the high noon. Those switches the tempo around. And with that Tennessee has so nobody left to touch point. Three seconds, nothing left to do. But watch the timer tick down and no progress made for Tennessee. Now they're going to need a full hole. Yeah, that's what we did last time, though. We gotta remember, on Nambani, we did not see anything besides the first point. It, it seemed impossible that Colorado could lose that, and they did here, though. Tennessee has no chance of winning. The only thing they can do is or lose. So, I mean, if you're Colorado, you're thinking, oh, like, you know, worst comes to worst, we don't get a point, but they don't get a point either. But you really want to get a point here going into Route 66 because you don't get a point there. Maybe things start to snowball, and then you lose the next two maps, and then all of a sudden you've lost the series. So, it's really important to put yourself on match point as soon as possible. Give yourselves as many opportunities as you can to win out. That is the most important thing. In three minutes, I mean, that, that's a good time bank, but Tennessee, we're definitely just we have the second one. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. I think that Colorado is going to have a better chance, but could still go the other way. Yeah. It Interestingly, I think University of Tennessee are actually going to run out with the Sig Ori combo, harkening back to a few seasons ago, I guess you could say. But 
You don't just you just don't see this that much anymore. Although Basher gonna get a little bit more benefit now that Ori doesn't take headshot damage from Fortify mode. Yep. Uh, I mean, you're gonna build a lot more now with Marissa, and I feel like we saw Tennessee kind of he hinted at this a bit before. They didn't actually run it because I believe they were, on the, they were on the attack when they were hinting at it. But this time they're gonna be on the defense. This works out really well. You gotta put as much utility into Alex as you can on the Ash. You gotta let them fire away, hit those headshots. Ash is not as strong as she used to be. We'll see if she can get stuff done this time around. But those dynamites, I feel like, you know, they're not as powerful either. Ash just in general is not as powerful, but they can still do a lot. Got to go for the rotation as Colorado is going to rotate all the way to that high ground and take it away from you. Yeah, that entire engagement, Alex only able to land one shot from the rifle. Not able to get a whole lot. Funkmaster receiving a well-timed projected barrier ruby. Going to be seeing Alex taking advantage of that positioning there. Now the Tornborn is the only one contesting point, or one of the only ones contesting point. Looks like Colorado already barreling ahead, cutting down member after member from the side of Tennessee. Baptiste not going to be able to touch, or unwilling to touch, perhaps. And with that, Colorado is going to be taking their second points. They are. Now they're going to go to match point. I just said how important it was to get there as soon as possible. They do it now. Now, Route 66 could be the final map of the series. Tennessee, they're playing it close. I mean, the fact that this went to extra rounds at all is pretty impressive for Tennessee, especially after what they did on them. But they just had a really good defense this time around, though. Weren't able to find it in Bird Boys again. Maybe a little dance. This time does get the kill credit for that. And we're going to be throwing it to a very short break. I'm going to be swapping out as I continue to have internet issues. Unfortunately, we're going to be bringing in Tropic Theory a little bit early. She is great. Y'all are going to love her. She's going to be here for the next match as well. So we'll be back in just a few moments. And we are back, folks. But that's not Jack. That's Tropic Theory. Tropic Theory, hello, <laughs> welcome, and thanks for sitting in. We appreciate this. Hello, y'all. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to have you. Now, Tropic, I know you've been a little bit behind the scenes watching the games from our production end, and you know as well as I do how crazy these games have been going so far. It's looking like a checkered board going between Colorado, Tennessee, Colorado, and 
Overall, we're having a good time. Oh yeah, University of Colorado really wants us right now. I'm bringing it back on Volskaya Industries, and I'm very excited to see what they have in store for Route 66 uh, coming in, in on Matt Ford here. I definitely tend to agree. I mean, of course, Tennessee not going to be looking to put this away in four. Instead, going to be looking to come back Ever and open. Route 66 <laughs> and then maybe leash on. Hopefully, yes. Um, so I'm pretty excited, especially since the uh, patch went live today. So teams are playing on a new patch. Um, that is not, we will see what uh, the teams come out in store. I'm looking for some Genji coming on uh, to Route 66, especially on the attack here. Um, you know, we all love the uh, Nano Blade, uh, potentially. Oh, yeah. I love some um, Anna in general, the unsung hero of the Nano Blade, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> play. Um, yeah. So we will see here. I definitely tend to agree, and I'm using my power of casting knowledge and the fact that I heard it through production and say that there's definitely a Winston involved somewhere on this map and it's it's definitely because i'm psychic and not just because um i can hear the the sounds of a jump pack but i'm getting work from my producer that that's actually not correct so i guess i'm not psychic i hate to break the news to everybody but you heard it here first <laughs> you're hoping for a winston i'm hoping mm -hmm. for an anna but we will see here as i do see the game feed now um we are looking at that train here and reminds me of the short film uh for you know the overwatch route 66. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A classic one might say, but as we look ahead, University of Colorado going to be leaning on this attack, which means Tennessee going to be coming out for a solid defense. Definitely going to be going for the defense here and uh, coming out with that May as well. It's all about those walls coming in here um, with Young Man, especially uh, with those imports. Um, I'm sure that we will definitely see a little bit of a pounce coming from these, uh, you know, double snipers or trying to get, you know, those heads to begin with here. Um, so we will see if they have the defense to stop those uh, potential headshots coming in from Cloud and Daddy D. We will be seeing a no forward hold from the side of Tennessee. Instead, just choosing to go on to big Earls, allowing themselves a little bit of time. And initially, Cloud will be throwing out the Venom Mine into the tunnel and catching out the Reinhardt. An excellent scout coming through there. Daddy D not needing to invest in the Sonar Arrow. Venom Master not going to be able to throw in the Fire Strike and get a lot of Bolt Charge just yet. That Diva Matrix is up. Seneth having to Ice Form outside of the tunnel. That puts them in a very dangerous spot. Taking it down with Ruby, getting a nice right click into this Cloud. Managing to post up on the high. How did the attacker get on the big Earls? Looks like a little bit of lack of attention coming from Tennessee with a nice headshot to put Cherry on this one. Yeah, I am a little surprised that they did opt to uh, go into that center uh, that center hold instead of, you know, the typical train uh, close hold, uh, which I think could be in part that that closer hold wasn't successful. But we do have, uh, you know, Basher grow into that uh, that shatter coming in. But Funkmaster, we saw the many shatters that he has going, and I'm sure that he will be utilizing this uh, to continue pushing this payload forward for this next, uh, to get to that first gap. But they may want to keep their shield up because now Senna 2 will be switching on to the Widowmaker, which means that those heads are going to be looking mighty tasty for the side of Tennessee. Let's see exactly how this goes. This Tennessee is going to be hopping off the high ground. The Dragon's going to be catching Paramir as they drop down, but the Immortality Field is going to be saving a few members. Tennessee now on a few rickety legs as Senna is the only remaining member that Widowmaker trying to get out. Yeah, and you know, Funkmaster utilizing that shatter, but it just wasn't enough as, you know, Young Man uh, just kept the team alive with that immortality filled with all coming in favor of Tennessee coming on this next fight. Uh, so you know what, we have to see a big defensive hold, especially since University of Colorado has four minutes and 45 seconds to cap the second point here. It's certainly a great spot to be in if you're on the side of Colorado. You have a lot of time to get your Widowmaker positioned as well. And the headshot Ooh. on his set, and that is brutal. What a headshot coming in from there, and that is definitely going to be, uh, you know, unfortunate coming into this next fight here. Right now, it's just the Zarya's trying to exchange shots. The right heart drops down. Sounds like the Earthshatter went out from Baxter. Indeed, it did, but it found nothing. Wow, getting taken down a little bit prior, but not going to be too detrimental here as the Infosites now come online. Ruby has that grab, throws out right into the middle, keeps everybody nestled into this uncomfortable corner. The Immortality Field and the Sound Barrier, but the Earthshatter comes in off the tail end, and with that Funkmaster able to swing heavy. Oh man, young man putting that uh, immortality field down, but it just was not enough. What a great coordination of Ultimates coming in for University of Colorado. A uh, big gravitation uh, grab coming in from Ruby, but you know, coming to this next fight, University of Tennessee really needs to do what they can to burn down this clock. We are 340 and counting. Um, and Alex, I'm hoping that a big Deadeye comes in here. Oh, but great first pick coming in from young man off the bat. 
Oh, but the trade on to Young Man with the Widowmaker. Things are now looking good for the Colorado team as they can continue pushing ahead with that man advantage. We need to swing onto the Zarya who's so isolated. Nobody can save her. Alex gonna be the next to fall, and now it's just stalling out the card as long as possible. They need to get off this Widowmaker at this rate. Yeah, I'm definitely, I think that they need a little bit more damage coming in, especially with, you know, with having Reinhardt on both sides. It is all about that shield war right now. And though Daddy D is getting, uh, you know, getting enough, uh, getting damaged, I think that they just need a little bit more. Um, Sentinel's uh, Reaper coming in uh, hopefully will help uh, for this next fight. We shall see an early immortality field going to be coming up from Illicit Lucky Dog. Maybe getting the speed amp from there, throwing in the grab aggressively Ooh. off the back end, and now it's going to be Tennessee digging their heels into the sand, allowing themselves to get restabilized after a rather big second point defense. Great stabilization coming in from University of Tennessee, and I'm hoping that the Reaper coming in from Central uh, is helping out with this. Uh, they were able to really target focus uh, more uh, with that gravitation. I'm sure that gravita the grab really helps instead of getting everybody into one spot. Um, but this is the ult of the, uh, the fight of the ult coming into this next fight. It is all about defense and which support lines are going to be able to save the team from this barrage of bolts coming in through. And it remains to be seen. Zenith is going to be hopping towards Cloud, but pulling that Reaper away might Ooh. prove a little bit too detrimental as Daddy D gets a 3k off the back end of those dragons. And now it's like University of Colorado are going to be dovetailing this into a final push. Oh man, University of Sydney is looking at, is up in the alt, uh, alt department right now, and Abasher, he has to get a big shatter coming in to keep this fight alive for University of Tennessee as we're looking at the last fight territory. And this is so dangerous for the defense, they have to be wary of Cloud on the high ground, but they can't contest, the card is so close, somebody has to be there to touch. Zenith, however, able to put down quite a bit of damage, perhaps make the attackers think twice about stepping too close to that card themselves. Now Daddy D trying to just wear down the shield of the Reinhardt, able to find a little bit, but not too much, not enough kills anyway. As now Colorado continuing to try to wrap around here, find the advantage. McCree not able to land the shots onto Daddy D, just missing by a hair. And with that, Daddy D might be able to walk away playing behind that Reinhardt shield. It will be the recruit for Colorado. You know, Tennessee's doing a great job right now, really taking care, taking that spawn advantage, and they played a really great um, stall tactic game that they were able to stabilize once again for this fight. Alex having, Alex and Sentinel, Sentinel also having those ults coming in online here with not too many defensive ults coming in, but the illicit with the switch to the Ana. Uh, so I'm hoping that they really take advantage of the anti, and hopefully that'll be the green light for them to push in. Only time will tell as this fight is getting near Senate, receiving a bit of healing as they take quite a wailing. Doubling back through the dragons that Wraith Form gonna make sure that they stay unharmed, however, is now the threat death blossom that is online for them. They take down the Lucio. However, the Reinhardt manages to get away, and with this now, it's gonna be heavy swings coming in. Basher managing to block Funkmaster, but taking a loss for their own efforts. And with this, it looks like Tennessee still managing to hold on strong. That Reinhardt so low. Now it's the amplification matrix coming out from the back. He's trying to get everybody to get that little extra step in their pep. And now the grab going to be going out. University of Tennessee locking all the attackers onto the card, making them easy targets. But Funkmaster going to be doubling back, trying to get some space. Oh man, yeah, we are getting trying to get some space here. Sun and all trying. They are trying to stagger this fight here and just stall as long as they can right now. But it looks like Tennessee, uh, University of Colorado is cleaning up here and we don't get the second cap. Wow. Sir Waldham, what a fight coming in for this last uh, last bit, and I really think that the switch to the Anna really helped. Elicit got that anti within that a lot of time of the fight, utilizing it the Nano on the Reinhardt and just clearing out that 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 field to you know cap that third point coming in. Wow, what a quick anti, uh, and uh, Nano coming in from Elicit. Yeah, have to agree. University of Colorado looking very good there. There were a couple of moments where Tennessee looked like they were going to hold them up for a little yes. bit longer, but to finish with a minute 23, that's still good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now it's up to University of Tennessee to at least complete it, or else, uh, you know, this win will go to University of Colorado. But with how UT, uh, you know, University of Tennessee fought last round in Velskaya, we can tell that they want this, and they're willing to push this even further um, to hopefully a map five, if anything. Um, so we will see how the brawls are played out and if University of Colorado will play on the train. Um, 
which hopefully they do. I always like seeing a, you know, um, a close court hold. So, uh, especially in Route 66, it is one of those maps where you're able to do that. But it doesn't look like I'm going to get, uh, you know, what I want this time around. <laughs> well, there's always many more maps to kind of uh, root around. Root around and hope for. <laughs> but we will see. I do like the fact that they have the Ana again. Um, so I'm hoping to see a lot more purples that the team could just engage on for this next fight. Yeah, I definitely want to see Elicit get a little bit explicit on that Ana. We'll see if they can manage to make it happen. Looks like University of Colorado will be defending on top of Big Earl's, uh, the big old shack there. We're going to get some high ground, but Tennessee might be going to meet them with a Sigma Shield to prevent their high ground from being too hotly contested of their own. Right now, Tennessee not finding too much. They're just getting themselves some positioning. They are going to have to deal with Colorado at some point, but for now, they're just letting the card get progress. We see the purple, and the teams are going to be going oh, in no. for that. Wow. Yeah, brutal performance there coming in from Colorado. The two kills, and that's immediately the initiation here. UT is in a rough spot. University of Tennessee is in an uncomfortable spot with this Sigma, with this Hanzo. Just trying not to get picked off. Oh man, yeah, they are forcing, uh, you know, University of Tennessee to reset once again and elicit on those with those antis. I'm sh he's definitely making them elicit and really getting those purple, making it a green light for Funkmaster just do his thing um, as soon as we get to that purple. So I'm hoping that University of Tennessee recognizes that. Which they are. They go in, They are going to that Zarya to help cleanse um, those people. So hopefully that will help for this next push. We'll certainly find out. Lucky Dog might need a little bit of the tempo changer that they need here. University of Tennessee going to be leading in immediately. That projected barrier getting burst to shreds. Lucky Dog going to be having quite a bit of charge, though. Alex taken down. That's one DPS. That's pretty much one of everything gone from the side of Tennessee. And they have to back up, and they're just not having it right now. Oh man, yeah, they're just not finding, um, you know, that space to just make that engagement coming in. Uh, University of Colorado is just one up in the first kills um, for each fight, and so I'm hoping that they're able to build up these alts and oh actually no we are going to change it we're going to change send it to that reaper so hopefully they are able to with this swap uh they're able to change the pace of this and get more damage on to ryan's shield which i think is really um hurting them right now the question oh. is can they close that distance with the ryan with the reaper when you have that on so right now it seems like they're finding a little bit of luck with that our shatter goes out from basher doesn't find too much and listen throwing the nano in and cloud dropping in from behind Takes oh. down the Zarya Baptiste manages to get away, however, it's gonna be said if he does find the kill, but that's the only kill it's the University of Tennessee's gonna get. Oh man, even though Cloud did get get the uh, you know die for that fight, he got two in the mix, so that just creates so much value for University of Colorado coming into ne this next fight. Um, hopefully, University of Tennessee recognizes that that spawn is so far away and they utilize this as a go 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 mark and to push his payload, um, you know, further. Will be a little bit difficult if they go through this train car. They might have to deal with the dragons. No insect, it looks like Daddy D will be throwing them in combination with the grab, but the immortality field is their only pair of here is gonna be dropping in this instance. Colorado continues to push their advantage, take down one after the other, and just make Tennessee suffer. Oh man, this is really unfortunate since University of Tennessee hasn't even built those really powerful alts like that Zarya or uh, you know, the Rhine Shatter, which could be big space building ults. We do have Young Man having that window, which hopefully will, uh, you know, output enough damage to take this off. We just need at least one hit coming in uh, to, you know, have that be the grow button for University of Tennessee to push on. Look ahead as Lucky Dog. Looking like they're holding quite a bit of charge, 100% as a matter of fact. As the Earth Shatter goes in underneath the cart, Funkmaster able to swing heavy, get three kills, the Immortality Field barely able to save anyone. That Lucio looks like flying off the map, but will be getting back to spawn with the ball right Never mind. Never mind. Oh man, Funkmaster once again with those gnarly shatters, and we are in last by territory here, Sir Wilhelm. So we have to see some plays we made right now with University of Tennessee. Bashir and Lucky Ark have to get oh, those no. little bit of percentages to even make a play here. Yeah, but Cloud's creeping in the back line, ready to just tick away at whoever might get caught out. Early immortality feels going to be costly for the side of Tennessee as Cloud tries to take the duel with their counterpart, Basher going ahead and hitting the Earth Shatter in a big way, but it only takes down Funkmaster on the that Reinhardt. Lucky Dog's through to help Alex chase down that opposing Zarya, and now it looks like Tennessee might start putting one foot in front of the other. Nice, they have this point, but they have to stay on it or else 
that is it, folks, right now. This is a really great position for Colorado to be in, especially since they have plenty of time to regroup really quick with ults coming into this next fight. Funkmaster having that shatter for this last fight. So, and also Bird Boys uh, having this, especially for Lucky Dog's Rav coming up. So it is all about defense and hopefully uh, getting making those plays. The last dragons fight. come through trying to create just a little bit of space. Set it throws in the Death Blossom, doesn't find anything. Instead, it's going to be the sound barrier from both teams. Ruby, however, not getting the message and she gets taken down with a single hammer swing. Asher now looking to put the team on their back just a little bit, as does Alex, managing to get the two shot with the McCree. Two kills, and with this, the card does get delivered. Oh, and we are going to go on to see if University of Tennessee does cap the second point with 224 on the clock. You know, I was really disappointed to see that University of Colorado didn't have a... Not as the coordination, the level of coordination that we've seen them at um, with that last fight. I'm thinking that they were just wanting to finish this up or hoping to finish this up. Um, and it just, you know, didn't really land the coordination with those alts coming in. But here we are. We have Funkmaster, have that Shatter coming in. And we will, I'm sure that he will be utilizing this next fight here. Oh. Bash is trying to throw in the Earth Shatter, can't quite find it instead. This switch right into the shield of Funk Master, who now holds all the cards in this engagement. Drops oh! down, throws in the Earth Shatter. An excellent response from the Immortality Field, but it might not be enough as already Colorado capitalizing on their advantage here. Now the grab online for Ruby, who may just be looking to hold on to it for next fight. Wow, what a all coming in, uh, what a shatter coming in for Funk Master, and that is once again going to be another reset coming in from the University of Tennessee. Alex still has that Deadeye, so I'm just going to be waiting for him to utilize that as maybe a, um, maybe a distraction for the rest of the team to push in on this, or at least a shield break for Funk Master. Funk Master is just really taking advantage of his shield and just, we have to break the Funk Master shield. It's gonna be the high noon coming in cloud taking down young man needs no immortality on the field for tennessee as now the flashman goes out however not enough bullets to fan the hammer effectively reaper zarya all low and quickly cleaned up by colorado as they continue to hold and tick down that clock one minute less than one minute on the clock here as we are approaching last fight territory we have maybe a fight or two left and lucky dog has that grab coming in so we are going to be looking to make some hopefully some big plays to push us the little the, the bit of meters needed for that second fight here bird boys it is all about the defense coming in from Alyssa and bird boys if they want to still hold this and maintain this for university of colorado here you see Santa trying to get up close and personal with that Zarya, however, forces the team of Colorado back. They are giving up quite a bit of space, and this can be a little bit detrimental. It's going to be Lucky Dog and Ruby both trying to exchange shots, but Tennessee comes out a little bit more victorious. Santa has that Death Blossom, holds onto it for the time being. They know they're going to need it to burn. Yeah, they're probably going to save all those walls coming in for third fight or third point here as they're able to cap it with one minute and 40 seconds and counting down on the clock here not many ults coming in from the university of colorado but they have that spot advantage which i'm sure that they will definitely be taking advantage of uh funk master having that that uh shatter once again so i'm hoping to see young man uh and parviard just really hold this defense because i'm sure that they are more well out there where that funk is looking for those big shadows that he's gotten all the night Definitely gonna be fields up for Basher if they don't want to eat this entire earth. The Shattered Funkmaster gonna be looking for it, as you mentioned, Dropic. Now we see Colorado continuing to hold their ground as this card does get contested. Tennessee has to make something happen. Senate is taken down by Cloud as Earth Shattered comes in from Basher, finding nothing. Return Shattered from Funkmaster, however, seems to find everything as they swing Ooh. ahead and die. The dead eye finding, too. Oh my god, another Funk Master uh, Shatter coming in, and Bashir already utilizes his ult. So, Lucky Dogs, I'm hoping to see a, uh, you know, util utilization of these ults. I haven't seen Alex hit that high noon yet, so hopefully they utilize this as a initiation for this next fight. We'll see us this next fight going rather quickly. No time for Colorado to regain their breath. Tennessee taking a rather quick tempo here. Bird Boys has the sound barrier, but Paradeer's gonna throw theirs in first. It's stunned out Senate from their Death Blossom, but it does force out the Immortality Field, so Colorado not gonna have that opportunity. Alex asked for it, got the double kill off the high noon, finding some success there, but now it's Daddy D's turn to throw in a, tra a tire to try to get some kills, but no down by Young Man's first rifle coming in healing as well as the damage both coming true from this baptiste player and it's looking like the card might just be delivered to point somebody has to stay on the cloud however gonna be staying on the high ground knowing that again they can just stay at arm's length pick away over time's gonna take down and the card's not gonna be able to make it wow the the kills coming in from daddy d's death that was so gnarly coming in that is the worst some of the worst ways to die i would argue in overwatch
Yeah, it's it's a bad feel. It is but, a bad feel. <laughs> but either way, it's gonna be Colorado coming out victorious here as we recap the play of the game coming in from Ruby. A fat grab, even breaking through the immortality field and the sound barrier. Oh man, yeah, super just consistently. Both of the tanks coming in from University of Colorado just working together as a team and just capitalizing on both of those, you know, anytime they had one of those powerful ults coming in. Um, so congratulations on the win to University of Colorado. Oh man, what plays coming in in the end there? Yeah, what a wonderful map for you to step in here, Tropic. I, I, it's, I mean, that was that was pretty heavy. I mean. It wasn't quite all the way there for Tennessee, but they still made it quite a ways. You can't be disappointed about that. It's not like you got stomped right out of the gate from first. Oh, 100%. You can just tell that that, uh, that win coming in from Bull Sky Industries just gave them that drive to push as hard as they can for, for you know, uh, Route 66. And I was hoping uh, they got really close there in the end, especially with uh, Alex's dead eye just catching two off the back, which... Definitely was a green light, but oh man, uh, I think Daddy D's change on the Junkrat was a really great change and great defensive hold for Colorado. Certainly tend to agree. However, folks, we are going to be taking it to a quick break here. After all that excitement, University of Colorado will be sending in an interviewee to have a few words with us, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome back everyone from the conclusion of that thrilling game of Colorado versus Tennessee. Colorado, of course, coming out 3-1 over their opponents. And now we're in the interview booth. Now we're in interview mode. We are going to be hopping in with Ruby to answer a few of our questions. So Ruby, hello and congratulations. Hi, nice to, nice to be back. Uh, nice to talk to you guys again. Absolutely. Good to have you back as always. Now, of course, uh, me and Tropic were talking a little bit. We were hyping up your Zarya plays, some big grabs coming through there. But yeah. I want to know about Ruby the player. Why Zarya? Is it a character that really your team benefits more from or just one that you like playing? I think it's a little bit of both, but um, specifically my team really, really likes playing Zarya comps, whether it's double bubble or just straight up brawl. But uh, it really allows my main tank Funk Master to like go in hard and, and really do some damage. So it's really a, a role I like to play because it helps enable the rest of the team. Oh man, I can I can just imagine. You were very, I always call a high charge Zarya very shiny Zarya. <laughs> so you were shiny <laughs> the whole yeah. game pretty much. I can definitely tell that Funk Master is one of those Ryans that play really aggressively um, and very coordinated aggressively, just coming in with shatter after shatter each fight. How do you prepare um, playing, uh, you know, having that opt-in role uh, with the, the Reinhardt uh, that plays that play style? 
Um, I just honestly, I, I constantly am watching him, ready for him to call out. Um, I basically just put save all of my resources for him because I know that if we put a lot of value into him, he's going to pop off. So I always try and just save everything for him if possible. All the resources go to you and press the W. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. And it really worked out. We clearly saw it on our, with our game uh, against Tennessee tonight. Um, and, you know, with that being said, we are pretty close to playoffs here. So how is the team preparing for that and utilizing these last few games um, until that time to prepare for hopefully get in the playoffs? We've really been stepping up uh, everything that we've been doing. We've been scrimming very often, VOD reviewing very often, and just trying to uh, perfect our gameplay as much as possible. We currently don't have a coach, so everything we're doing is coming just from the players, so I'm really proud Ooh. of everybody for, uh, that for doing awesome. that. But yeah, yeah, we've just been trying to scrim as much as possible and having weekly VOD reviews as well. I love it. Just like the team environment, utilizing each and everybody's, uh, you know, own perspective and, you know, experience <laughs> to help everybody out. Wow. Exactly, yeah. And I, 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 I think we saw the fruits of that labor definitely come out here with your victory over your opponents. But overall, I think that's about all the questions we have for you, Ruby. Before we do let you go, do you want to give you the opportunity to give any shout outs, whether it's your team, your family, whoever you might feel deserve it? Absolutely. The shout out today is definitely going to go out to Bird Boys, our Lucio. He got some amazing environmental kills today Ooh, and he yes. was playing out of his mind. So definitely Bird Boys gets the shout out today. Oh, all right. Well, Bird Boy, hope you're watching because we've been watching you and getting the shout out from Ruby as well. Certainly it doesn't hurt. But Ruby, once again, thank you for coming in. And in case you haven't heard it a couple times already, congratulations. Thank you guys very much.